you guys and welcome back to the project manga podcast i'm noxy what up y'all it's kiko and nickums and we are back with one shots which is our bi-weekly live manga podcast that we have every other wednesday at 9 p.m central standard time right here on the project manga twitch channel tonight um we are joined with a special guest that you might remember from previous um episodes of our youtube show we got shonen schnooty what is going on bro good to see you <laughs> What's good, guys? It's good to be back. I love being on here. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. So you guys might remember Schnooty from such episodes as um, all three of our Anime versus Battle episodes that we've done. We also linked up with him in collaboration for a couple of the panels during AnitubeCon last summer. Uh, and we will be linking up again for the new AnitubeCon that we have coming up this winter. But uh, Yeah, so basically all the, uh, all the good videos that you've ever made have been, you know... <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> those hey, no cap though. Those are some of our those are some of our best our best videos. Those anime versus battles are super fun. Can't wait to get back to those. Um, no, they're definitely tight. I love doing them. Yeah, hell yeah, mm-hmm. dude. But uh, yeah, Schnudi, um, tell our audience for those who don't know what you do and where they can find you. Yeah. Uh, so if you really just look up uh, Schnudi on YouTube, you could just look up my currently small channel. And what <laughs> I do is basically. Uh, I do power system explanations, power explanations, and character breakdowns, as well as doing a little bit more later, but right now, that's what I'm focusing on. So if you just go to uh, Twitter, you can look me up at Shonen, Shonen Schnooty, and if you just go on YouTube, you can just look me up at uh, Schnooty. Yes, sir. So you're gonna do Negators next? That's what uh, I've been saying, ooh. bro. <laughs> Dude, we need that's, undead know, unlock maybe, content maybe. on your channel for real, bro. It's hard oh, yeah, to exactly. like. We need more time. I would yeah. say. It's, it's I think hard we need to a little not. more time. Yeah, I think you could do it now, but I mean, it would just yeah. be like, I don't know, specific if, characters explained, maybe. Yeah, yeah. At yeah, the yeah, latest, I think I, at the latest, I think I would do like uh, some negators, like when they drop the anime announcement, because it's definitely gonna get an anime announcement. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, um, we're talking about Undead on Luck tonight. And essentially, the philosophy behind this episode, since this is one shots and this is a series specific manga podcast, we wanted to we wanted to show Undead on Luck some love. But the way that we kind of wanted to have this conversation is we wanted to we wanted to structure it in like two halves, right? So the first half of the conversation is gonna be like a comprehensive recommendation, a non-spoiler recommendation from us to the viewers out there that might not be familiar with Undead Unluck. Maybe they wanna read it, but haven't gotten a good recommendation. Maybe they tried to read it and they were turned off by the initial marketing or the very first chapter of Undead Unluck, which is uh, notoriously cringy to a lot of people. So we are here to tell you why you should read it, what's great about it, what sets it apart from its peers, and uh, the latter half of the conversation will be current events talk for, you know, fans that are, you know, currently caught up with Undead Unluck. So it is a all things Undead Unluck episode, and we're super excited to get into it because it's a very underrepresented, underrated, criminally underrated series mm-hmm. inside of Weekly Shonen Jump, Dang. and it does not get the love that it very well deserves. And I'm sure that will change once the anime comes out, but like we're a manga podcast, so we're gonna try to get you to read it before the anime. So <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, yes, facts. But yeah, so Undead Unluck, you guys. I don't know who wants to start it off, but I mean, what do you guys want to say to potential, you know, readers of Undead Unluck to get them to read Undead Unluck without telling them too much? Man, <laughs> Schnooty, yeah, you want to know what? Yeah, you haven't yeah, been on the yeah. show in a while, Schnooty. Get in that bag, buddy. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I never agreed to this no spoiler part, so I'm about to ruin everything for everybody. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, nah, this, <laughs> but no, this this series, like like you said, is criminally underrated and yeah. it's super like it's it's so wild because what was it? Jujutsu Kaisen was what made me want to start doing YouTube in the first place. You're like, okay, I gotta cover this. But then when I started reading Undead Unluck, I was like, okay. I yeah. gotta start talking about something a little more than just power systems because everything yeah. going on in this series is so mind-blowingly like I, I, just spectacular. There's just like yeah. okay, somebody has to talk about this as yeah. like under uh, it, it, it will throw you off because I think I was one of the first people who was like, okay, yeah, I'm not feeling this. I I think I even told you, Nazi, or I told somebody like, yeah, yeah. don't pick it up. It's it's gonna be like just random. Like this shit is comedy. weird, man. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> hanging dong, it's be, hanging dong, be, and grabbing titties. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like 
they're just like yeah it's whatever because this, this was me out of like coming out of like reading the first couple of chapters of i think mm-hmm. a gravity boys i was like okay yeah i'm sick of all this gag manga stuff yeah and then i was like <laughs> okay whatever kept reading on i was like oh wait this wait this is, is this is something gosh. different hold on they were they, they were bullshitting <laughs> me second. they were bullshitting me man <laughs> i got the wool pulled over my peepers <laughs> and a lot of people like, think that so like funny. a lot of people think it was like the marketing you know what i'm saying obviously mm. um you know it's it's promoted and and i don't know how much of this is tozica or how, I, I don't know like what the conversation was i don't know if you know weekly shonen jump looked at this series saw the content and decided not to tell tozica like yo are you sure you want to like introduce your like your series is tight don't get me wrong mm-hmm. i read it this is cold like the world mm-hmm. needs this <laughs> but like this first chapter like what <laughs> what, are, what are you doing <laughs> you know what i mean like 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 i don't know because like we we have so many um instances in history uh inside of the the publication line where editorial will come to like we've seen plenty of one shots that by the time they hit the shelves inside of their serialization mm-hmm. Look at Bone Collection. If you guys have peeped the Bone Collection one shot in the, ver- the first chapter of Bone Collection, starkly different vibe. Very you know different. I mean? Very different. different. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. typically, and I mean, look at Naruto. There were plenty of editorial decisions that were made before Naruto began its serialization. Like Kishimoto wanted to make every character that wasn't like a student of an animal. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking, there is, there's all types of like shit that they do that they make you change before your series starts if they don't like certain concepts. It's crazy to me that they let Tozuka in the door or out the door with such a wild first mm-hmm. chapter and it's crazy how they decided to market it right there with, you know, sexual assault on the front cover. You know what I mean? Right. So it's, <laughs> right. it, it's weird that it's, it, it's an anomaly. To get over. It's an anomaly, yeah. you know, inside of inside of the publication line, in my opinion, because I have no idea yeah. why they decided to go this route. But yeah, I, I have, have been reading Undead on Lux since like chapter one. Right. So like mm-hmm. all, all the manga that's been coming out in 2020, I've just been trying to in, in Shonen Jump, say in the Manga Plus app, yeah. I've been trying like to do my best to like just like try every single new series that comes out. You know what I mean? So Mori yeah. King, A Gravity Boys, Mashal, Undead on Luck. Right. Um, and like first chapter of Undead on Luck, certainly the weakest chapter. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it's not it's, close. It's not close. Especially like, for 50 pages it's like that's your that's your kick it's not supposed to be the weakest chapter right like that's <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's, it's tough but like and and the sexual assault is there and uh I, it's i think it's very justified for people to say like yeah i'm not i'm not, I'm not, I'm not cool with this i'm not yeah. okay with this yeah. 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 i yeah. i will just i i just kept going because like it's japan you know like they yeah. they do this stuff a lot in anime like say um ayakashi triangle it's like super etchy right super yeah. super etchy like way more than i would even prefer to read but i'm still current in it just because I'm, I'm trying to see where it goes you know what i mean yeah. And Undead Unluck, like, already by, like, chapter three, they're starting to turn the boat, you know, yeah. back onto a normal course. And, like, I would say definitely by chapter nine. Like, chapter nine, when that came out, yeah. I tweeted, like, one of my only tweets about Undead Unluck, like, way back. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, chapter nine? Yep. Y'all better be reading this right now. You know yeah. what I mean? Because that's really where it turns for me um, from, like... Uh, and, and of course, there's like t- so much stuff that you don't notice in the first, you know, nine chapters yeah. that you went upon reread. You're like, oh, shit, like this is way deeper than I thought it was. Yes. But chapter nine, I think anyone, if you read through chapter nine, ten, and, and I, I think you definitely got to give it that much of a shot because you'll see that this is a hugely deep and original new series. That's like huge potential. And, and it has capitalized and and definitely proven itself since then. Yeah. 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 And, yeah and I'm the, in the. Yeah. Go ahead, Kiko. I was going to say I'm in the same boat. I mean, f- largely with the fact that I vehemently opposed reading Undead Unluck, similar to my stance on Chainsaw Man. It's like the first covers, the character design, stuff like right away, it's like, I mean, I guess those are a little different in the fact that I just thought Chainsaw Man was going to be dumb with a dumb chainsaw head guy who's going (laughs) to just hack and slash zombies all day. I was definitely wrong about that. But then, I mean, yeah, when you see sexual assault literally on the cover of something, you're like, Oh man, that's tough. And and it's like, okay, maybe I'll read the story to see if like there's a little bit of context here in this first chapter to see why that happened. And then you're like, nope, that's that's just sexual assault. Like that's exactly <laughs> what I thought it was. Bottom line, that's what it is. There's no if and it's like, buts. And so I was like, no, I won't read this. I'm not doing it. I ain't doing no no there's no if I got a if I got a dong blur line for the first fucking ten chapters of my manga, every chapter, it's like no, 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 no. And and you know, I'm gonna I'm going to take my shirt and wrap it over your head so I got titties on the back of your neck the whole time. It's like, <laughs> what am I reading here? What am, I'm too old for this. I'm too old for this. But but you, yes, Nick, 
convinced me, read it again at chapter nine, just do it again. And I'm yeah, like, it was okay, chapter nine fine. where he was like, chapter Yo, nine. Yep. Yeah. It's like, you just have to do it. It's I, and, and coming from Nick, it's like, if it was coming from somebody else. I might say, no, fuck no. But like coming from Nick, you know, sexual assault, I know for a fact is a, is a, is a big deal breaker for yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, yeah And it's sure. like, and it's, and, and it's like, so if he's telling me to just get past that, it yeah. was, it was, I, I had to do it. And so when you read the story and you get a little farther than that, I know we're non spoilery, so I'm not going to say anything crazy, but um, there's so many mysteries to unravel. There's so many hints and bread breadcrumbs along the way. Like I was rereading all of it as much as I could today. And I saw something in chapter 16 that gives a huge, Huge clue on somebody's ability in chapter 34 and it's just like ah man it's just crazy that like it, it once you that reread value is just top tier it's like yeah. the best it, it really it, yes is. yeah I, 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 talk, I talk about reread right value like, we talk about reread value a lot you know yeah. what I mean like inside of like Hunter Hunter Jujutsu Kaisen mm-hmm. just like stories mm-hmm. that have like really big reread value and then you come to Undead Unluck and it's like okay you should reread Hunter Hunter because you know there's a whole for the reasons that you should you know what i mean but like hunter hunter has like 350 chapters you know what i'm saying 360 370 chapters fucking jujutsu kaisen yeah. going you know going into the 150 chapter range or something to have so much reread value and for you to learn so much every time you go back through it in 40 chapters 40 is ridiculous. Chapters. like that doesn't that doesn't wow. make any sense to me and as far as the reread no. value goes i bet you the reread value even goes back all the way to you and actually it does because I have reread uh, Undead Unluck recently. And actually, if you reread the first chapter, there's things in the first chapter that are valuable for the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. beyond like, yeah. that. You know <laughs> I what I mean? Swear. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and as cringy as that first chapter is, I feel like I'm trying to justify that some of the decisions that were made in it. And mm-hmm. like when you go back through it, this relationship with Fuko and Andy is initially very cringy because she's like i don't want anything to do with you and he's like hubba hubba you're gonna have something to do right. with me anyway and it's like okay right. that's weird bro but then like she's as the series goes on i think down the yeah, block get i think away, I, I think away. I, I think what it was was just a way uh, uh, i know uh, this is a decision that i don't really agree with but i kind of understand it because i think it was a way to um obviously give you the plot obviously andy needs fuko for his motivations you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Obviously, mm-hmm. Fuko needs Andy because of his life experience in the world, and he will be able to teach her about what's happening to her. And she realizes that very quickly, even though that sexual assault barrier is still like keeping them apart as characters. But I think it was mm-hmm. done that way mm-hmm. to because everything is touch based with Fuko. You know what yeah. I mean? I think that this is a way to introduce their personalities. Obviously, Andy is very, ah! and Fuko is very, mm-hmm. mm, you know what I mean? So you have these two yeah. very yeah. intense personalities on opposite sides of the spectrum that have to meet for, you know, specific reasons. Their interactions have to be, like, intimate and touch-based. So I think that mm-hmm. this was just a way for Andy to be like, hey, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, you're, you know, your shit is based on touch, so you're going to fall in love with me and touch me all the time. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's weird, but I, it kind of makes sense when you think about it for, like, longer than like oh my you know like when you read like as you go through it you can't help but root for their relationship it becomes much mm-hmm. more yeah genuine it wholesome becomes and yeah genuine, much more like wholesome. over time yeah, yeah over yeah. time you know what i mean it's not it's not like cringy you know sexual assault the entire mm-hmm. time and they could keep that gag going but they didn't and i right. love how it's developed yeah and mm-hmm. a huge a huge factor for me personally in terms of you know, if you can say like that, it does get more wholesome over time, right? You could mm-hmm. imagine a, a situation like this where like the main character is Andy and Fuko is the s- sub character, you know, right? Like yeah. a you know B level character, right? Not yeah. the main character, but that's yeah. not the case in Undead Unluck. The main characters, there's two main characters, mm-hmm. Andy and Fuko, and mm-hmm. Fuko gets tons of dialogue, tons yes. of dialogue, tots, tons of speech bubbles. She like gives her, her feelings about the situation. You know what I mean? Yes. So like yeah. when when Andy's being shitty, she says that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She t- tells other people like yeah. um, say when she's talking to Gina, right? Like n- no spoilers or anything, but like she's talking to Gina and expressing her feelings about what's been going on. On. so like yeah. you get her agency she has agency which is definitely like what you need to be able to justify you know uh saying that this turns in a direction away from sexual assault yeah. and and grows over time if, if we never got that that would be a very uncomfortable position to take i mm-hmm. think you know what i mean yeah well in uh <laughs> chapter three i mean even just real quick snooty just to kind of uh dovetail on his point uh chapter three is when you i mean that was even the chapter that you gave example for where it really starts to turn and what noxy was talking about i can really tie both of them in where Fuko is reliant on Andy because they have, you know, pursuers that are trying to kill them. And it's like, 
Andy is going to be able to protect her. So Andy is in this position of power over her. And she, at, in chapter three, is like, okay, because my ability is touch base, I really have to go very far with you. And Andy's like, no, fuck that. Like, I would never take advantage of a woman just because she's like relying on me. And it's like, that's such yeah. a huge thing yep. to just bring this right back in yeah. a very short you know, portion of the story. It's already chapter three. You're like, okay, okay, fine. There's still going to be some not gonna hanging. Be what you think it There's is, still going to be yeah, titties right. on necks, but like, yeah. it's it's going to be far more like thoughtful, consensual. Uh, I don't know. Like, there's there's just a lot of planning and well executed uh, moments behind it that it it yeah. just doesn't feel that way anymore after those yeah. first initial couple of chapters. Yeah. So and yeah. Sorry. One last sorry, thing. Snooty. Yeah. Snooty. Uh, no, one last it. thing. I just want to go into before I lose the thought. Going uh, coming back off of um, Nick's point again about um about uh what was your point again holy shit like Foucault's agency she has oh, like yeah yeah, yeah 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 right so not only is that a point but it's also really crazy how much you learn about these characters and how much development you get for especially Andy and Foucault and how much like growth and progression you see in Foucault's character specifically from chapter one to chapter 40 because when she's introduced She's introduced as very timid. She's very standoffish. She obviously doesn't know anything about the world. But in 40 chapters, you see this beautiful like metamorphosis into this like mm -hmm. butterfly of a character inside of Foucault yeah. where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy that not only do we get this much development and progression for any character in 40 chapters, but a female character inside of a Shonen series that also has a male main character right next to her mm -hmm. is crazy to see. And Fuko's a total badass now, you know what I mean? That's not that yeah. big of a spoiler, you know what I mean? Because that's something you kind of hope for when you see a timid female mm -hmm. main character in a shonen series yeah. and hope that they eventually become a badass. But the way that it happens inside of Fuko's character, it doesn't feel shoehorned. It feels very natural and organic, even though it's such a, such a short time span. I'm very impressed with Fuko as a female character inside of Jump in such a short amount of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like like Tosaka is like going so crazy with the amount of character characterization that uh, he's giving Fuko, or I guess they are giving Fuko right now, yeah. because it's like you really don't see any kind of like good. I mean, I, I want to say like safe for like Nobara right now because yeah. like she's one of the few female characters that are actually getting some shine, and then when you see Fuko, like okay, you go from this this shy, timid girl who doesn't touch anybody due to the nature of her ability. Yeah. And then she meets Andy. Andy gets that characterization, like like Kiko was saying, like, oh yeah, it's just like so fast, like chapter three. Yeah. Like you go from like this perverted dude who's just like <laughs> groping whoever, who, what it feels like is like he's just groping whoever he wants. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, no, I, I would never go like take too, too far of a step, like outside of my like line. Mm -hmm. Like, no, we're just gonna keep riding and doing what we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love how going into another like uh, um, facet of Undead Unlux appeal that I feel like a lot of people will appreciate is all of the references inside of it. There, there, mm -hmm. the way that Tozuka uses references not? is very, um, it's very different and it's very cool because usually when a mangaka has a legendary pioneer reference like Rock Lee dropping the the weights, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. or some other kind of iconic moment that we can think of inside of the genre, when a new author wants to pay homage to that, they do it in very obvious ways. Sometimes they miss the mark and it's cringy, but the ones that do it right, you can tell they're paying very clear homage to this thing. With Tozuka, you can feel where the influence is coming from, but you can't like, like, like if you tried to like say like, yo, this is definitely what this author was thinking inside of this moment, people might be able to, like people might say that you're reaching. And that makes sense because it's so vague. It's so subtle, but he sticks the landing like every single time. Like for for me, for example, like Andy is very reminiscent of Wolverine inside of Marvel Comics to me. And Fuko right. is very reminiscent of Rogue. They have yeah. a relationship oh, inside I didn't think of about Rogue. Yeah, they have yeah. a relationship yeah. inside oh, yeah, of you're comics. Actually right. Yeah, they have a relationship inside of comics that makes sense to where you see them hanging out all the time. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. Tozuka could be, you know, a, a, a Western comic book geek. You know what I mean? And this could be because Andy acts a lot like Wolverine. Like all he's missing yeah. is the cigar. Like that's literally yeah. all he's missing. You know what I'm saying? Like he's even like the regeneration, the the mm -hmm. the, the demeanor, the the way of speaking, like everything is like I feel like he, I, I, there should be more bubs in the dialogue, like personally. <laughs> but and then. You know, and then you see, but, but at the same time, though, even though those similarities are there, like, it's not obvious when you look at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you yep. have to think about it for a sec. And there's other homage, or there's other influences that you can feel inside of Undead Unluck, but, like, can't 
you know, hard, you know, confirm that they're, you know, that they're influences. There's a, the union inside of Undead Unluck feels a lot like the Phantom Troop inside of Hunter oh, yeah. Hunter. And I've said that Absolutely. before, you know, in our analysis and whatnot, there's a whole bunch of super tight shit in Undead Unluck that not a lot of people I feel like will pick up on, especially not on a first go through, especially mm -hmm. if they're expecting yeah. cringy, etchy content right. going right. into it. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So yeah, I remember that was like, oh, yeah, uh, oh my bad. My bad. No, you go for it. <laughs> I was just gonna say like that, like I, I, that was a big thing with like Fire Force too. People were saying like, oh yeah, this is like mid, this is trash, this is whatever, just because like there was like a whole lot of like there was like an abundance of like fan service, like the kind of like Mashima kind of thing that you would yeah. get, or just like oh yeah, boobs everywhere, like that. Yeah, that's the <laughs> kind of feeling that people would get. But then once you really get into reading Undead, I'm like, like this is that is nowhere close to anything yeah. revolving around whatever the main plot is, which it gets. It's oh my god, so great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to um yeah. do a little tangent and go back to what we were saying about reread value, right? Like to give yeah. like another example of like the huge reread value and like the reread value plays directly into the depth of the magic system, the depth yes. of the world building, the depth of just the situation these characters are in, right? Like mm -hmm. it is super deep, way deeper than you'd expect on the first read through. Like for example, like I said I've been reading it since chapter 1, read the whole thing a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. I reread it again, second read through. And I was now that I had read it, you know, one time, mm -hmm. I was yeah. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a screenshot of every single time I see something that I think is quote unquote relevant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a hint at something or or a reference mm -hmm. to a future event. It's almost every single page. Yeah. You're, you're like, you're like, yep, that's something. Yeah. Next page. Oh, oh wow, yep, that's something, you know. Yeah. You, you you just keep going almost every single page, and sometimes on a page, multiple different panels on a page have a huge point, a huge like this is gonna be a thing in like ten yeah. chapters, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh and that was on my second read through. On my third read through that I just started like yesterday, I'm not done or whatever. I'm on like chapter ten now, my third read through. I was already still finding things that I'd never seen before. Yeah. And yeah. someone in the chat right now who's about to catch up um live, you know what I mean? Uh Boriqua <laughs> Mihawk. They've been uh, posting in the special grade chat um, mm -hmm. and showing things, you know, they're taking screenshots yes. of, of things, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I did not notice that. In two <laughs> read-throughs, I did not notice that, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's there a big is, deal. It is immensely deep. Like, yeah. Oh, and so, I love so the crazy. way I love the way that Tozika like gives information in these like very Easter egg, like breadcrumb style ways to where it doesn't need to be, you know, exposition to be spoon fed to you. So I love the show not tell writers you know what i mean oh, like yeah. oh, obviously yeah. we we love fujimoto tatsuki which is a very show not tell approach to to his comic and tozuka does it in a way to where it's not heavily reliant on symbolism like fujimoto tatsuki is like he has a lot of clues in his visual storytelling that like you really have to like do some like research on like pagan like culture and like other kinds of like shit you know what i mean or you, there's some mm -hmm. movie references thrown in there too but like yeah. with tozuka it's like there's a whole bunch of visual storytelling but it's like you know, small little, bare, like sometimes you can barely like decipher it, but it's there, you know what I mean? Small little Easter eggs because the the story of Undead Unluck is this huge mystery that's being unraveled, you know what I'm saying? In, for the characters involved and for us as the reader. And these Easter eggs are little clues that you, us as the reader can use to figure out this overarching mystery of the plot, which is amazing, which mm -hmm, is an amazing yeah. concept for the story. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Because you, like you were saying, Nick, you can literally go through on every page in a reread and find something wildly significant to the future of the story mm -hmm. yeah. that wasn't like not exposition dumped on yeah. you. Like this yeah. is the yeah. way it is. Like no, like, it wasn't in your face. It wasn't yeah. shoved down your throat. Yeah. It was yeah. so yeah. subtle that you would never yeah. know it unless yeah. you knew, right? And then yeah. you can go back and reread it and be like, oh yeah. my god. And Tozuka, so Tozuka will <laughs> give us the answers to these things, but we can find the answers before yeah. he tells us. Yeah using the story that's fucking amazing mm -hmm. yeah and the it way really yeah the way words are bolded right yeah like, there's yeah. oh, so many it. bolded it. words like in jojo within, yeah yeah within yes the story of undead unluck but there you would think at this point that every bolded word was some kind of clue or hint to a mystery and some are not and that's what's mm -hmm. also really cool because a lot of them are like maybe used for like dramatic effects sometimes you mm -hmm. know or Maybe not. It's, it's, it's again like when when you see um, like Andy say something where like basically, oh man, I, I like wrote something down that's not going to be super spoilery, but like, okay. uh, no rule can tie me down, and me is bolded. Like, is that <laughs> a dramatic effect? Is that for dramatic effect? Yeah. Like, anytime Tozika <laughs> bolds letters, 
Yeah. It's a really fucking big deal in this story. Yes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. Like, not just, like, emphasis on the word, like, bold usually means. Bold. But, like, no, <laughs> this is a hint or a clue to something yeah. way bigger than this scene, you know? Yeah. So it's, like... And then, like, sometimes, it's, like, Kiko said, like, it, it sometimes probably won't be. It's just, like, a bolded yeah. word. And then that's that's probably, like, a big thing that you... That's one word they can really describe Undead Unluck. It's just misdirect. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ooh, not... Like, and, yeah, like, misdirection and, like, like a said, motherfucker, bro. Like, and, like, Nickham said, it's, like, you, you can read this story so many times. Like, I read it once, and I was like, okay, I gotta go back through it with, like, a magnifying glass. Did it again. <laughs> yeah, I go back with a microscope. Did it again. You yeah. gotta go back with a telescope. Like, it, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an onion that's never, ever going to be finished, like, unraveling right. or being, like, peeled because, like, because of certain story elements, for one, and two, because Tozuka just knows what they're doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and another, like, mm-hmm. my, probably my favorite instance of misdirection inside of Undead Unluck is the union and i'm not going to say why for for Mm -hmm. for readers out there because that was really cool for me to read the first time but um so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna save y'all that but like the union the antagonist group you know what i'm saying inside of undead unluck or Mm -hmm. just the faction that the first faction that you familiarize yourself with is definitely handled in a very um interesting way and definitely a very satisfyingly fresh and inventive way in my yeah definitely Um, definitely without question yeah 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 no question for sure yeah yeah um (laughs) you guys want to talk about the power system (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean we could it's kind of hard you don't want to go too deep in this in the power system in in the non-spoiler section because part of the fun is learning the rules of the magic system over time right but like Mm -hmm. i guess like i think something we can say is that like i would say um, that this is a magic system at the level of Hunter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jujutsu Kaisen, Hunter, Undead Unluck. Yeah. Which is crazy yeah. because, I, like, it, with, with Jujutsu Kaisen being new, and you're, you're like, oh, man, here's, here's our new Hunter, Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> and then Undead Unluck sneaks in here like, you know, I, I got some shit, too. I got a power saying? system, like, too, for y'all. I, I mean, yeah, it might yeah. not be, you know what I'm saying, it might not be all this elaborate shit on paper like Nen and, and right. Yoku, but it's going to throw you for a loop. Honestly, um, and I was talking about with Shinui a little bit earlier, actually, in one of our group chats. Yeah, about, I was about to say. Like... Uh, yeah, about Undead Unluck's power system, and mm-hmm. and we're talking about the difference between hard and soft systems, and Shinui had brought up that Undead Unluck feels like a softer system, and it does. On paper, you know what I'm saying, there isn't much to it, like, you know, on paper. You know what I mean? What hardens it, in my opinion, is the explanations you know, that you get for the abilities, the application of them, and Tozika's care for continuity. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because yes. Yes. even though it's yes. literally just, like, ability and caveat right now, you know, mm-hmm. basically, like, that sounds really simple, yeah. but, like, the rules yeah. its system has are always followed. You know what I'm saying? They actually affect the world around the characters in significant ways that can always be explained by that very succinct you know, rundown of the system itself. You know what I mean? You can mm-hmm. tie things back always to a very simple concept. And I feel like right. that hardens a power system. You know what I mean? She- Seamus in the chat had a, had a really good uh, point that like, it's actually a very similar system to Jojo. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Where like actually, stands, yeah. I, I believe stands in particular is probably what, you yeah. know, Seamus yeah, yeah, is yeah. referred to. Right. Yeah. Where like, there are rules, right? There's lots of rules. You can only do so much stuff, but it is very much like, you, this character has this one ability and it's not like you know you could learn that ability you have your own separate ability kind of thing um mm-hmm. but like you know in terms of jojo i you know have you know said before or whatever maybe not on the on the show or anything but you know just chatting in group chats yeah. that like uh hunter hunter magic system nen is partially an offshoot of stands you know what right. i mean like mm-hmm. you know a conjured nen beast is so much like a stand it's crazy mm-hmm. or, or there's also you know stands that aren't necessarily conjured you know punch ghosts or whatever but they have more of like an ability type thing <laughs> um so like so like there, there's ghosts. definitely like a relationship <laughs> there now jojo is obviously much a softer system but like um i don't know i, I feel like part of the part of the why i don't think Undead Unluck is, I wouldn't call it a soft magic system, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, when, when you have a character that's, yeah. like, for example, say, like, you are a uh, a self, a compulsory self-targeting negator type. It's, yeah. it's like, yeah. if you can definitively say those words, yeah. compulsory <laughs> self-targeting, that yeah. means that there's a level of rules that, like, we're not talking Black Clover, we're not even talking Hero, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're, we're talking there's actual rules here that, like, it applies to all abilities, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. that's, that's, that's very good for me. And 
Um, setting aside the rules, I, I just think this is a totally fresh new system. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's, yeah. it's not like Jujutsu Kaisen and, and Hunter, where yeah. like yeah, Jujutsu exactly. Kaisen is almost identical to Nen with a few extra rules and a few less rules or whatever, right? Like, it's very similar. Yeah. And yeah. it's so similar, you can just be like, we've often said on the show, like, yeah, this is just Nen. Let's just consider it Nen. Nen you know Jr. I mean? yeah. Um, yeah. Nen Jr. But this is new. This is brand new, yeah. and that's yeah. what makes it's it even new. cooler. It's the perfect, like, it's, it's like if... A hard system and a soft system had a child, but it's yes. not a mid system. It's not a medium system. Yeah. It's like its yeah. own new race, right? Yeah, like yeah. When two different races have a child. They're basically yeah. a different race from both of their parents, right? Like that's yeah. what this is. It's like mm-hmm. the literally, you know, you have like Nick said, like you know, compulsory self-targeting, you know, types or or you know, non-compulsory external external targeting types. Yeah, like yeah. they have firm, you know, like. How the applications, between, yeah. yeah, yes, the applications of 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 their powers are going to be all, you know, kind of related to what type they are. But that's just that is like nothing. That's like that is barely a tip of an iceberg on on yeah. how these abilities will work, you know. But yep. it's it's like or unlike Nen, where you're going to have, you know, I can learn Shu and Ryu and all these other like you know advanced techniques. There isn't that, but there is. It's just more rules or um, applications to your ability that have always existed that you're trying to unlock. It's yes. not even like a yes. not like a hero too, where your quirk it, you know evolves. It's not like that either. It's like yeah. this always existed within you. You just didn't know you how had, to use it entirely. You just didn't and know how to use that's it. That's yeah. kind of like what we were talking about um, on our newest review of Undead Unlock too. But mm-hmm. uh, probably my favorite thing about the power system inside of undead unlock is that everything inside of undead unlock is a huge mystery like every like it's all yeah. mystery oriented even, even, even down to the energy system because the energy system yep. behaves in a way to where the combat is so cool because you have to figure out so many things mid fight you have to find out what your opponent's ability is and how it works mm-hmm. because they don't tell you meanwhile it's running amok in the background while you're trying to fight it so you have to find out what the fuck it's doing to you once you find out what it's doing to you then you have to find out what its weakness is once you find mm-hmm. out what its weakness is you have to find out how to exploit that weakness and defeat them all while you are experiencing this ability trying to kill you you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so it's really yeah. cool on the fly strategic depth to combat Mm -hmm. which is really fucking cool and just that aspect of hiding your abilities from people and them having to figure it out mid-fight is just like probably the best way to have combat done in your story in my opinion yeah that that actually you know brings to mind you know that a very interesting and convenient writing you know um uh plot device that tozuko has used right yeah um in the form of andy right so andy uh, undead can't die, right? Like, like that, I think that's enough of a non-spoiler kind of thing. You, you're, you're gonna <laughs> yeah. p- figure that out, you know, in chapter one, you know, before the end. So, or maybe not from really the title. What's the name of, the, yeah, what's what's the the name of this manga? Book? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, we've, but we've like, been saying um, Wolverine this entire time. They haven't figured it out by now. I don't know. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. we mentioned Wolverine already. Yeah, yeah. But like, but like, um, so what better? What better kind of character to be one of the main characters? Going into these battles where normally it would be completely stacked against you, you do not know your opponent's uh, negator type, you don't know what the activation conditions are, you don't know how to beat it, but luckily our MC can't die, you know what yeah. I mean? So, like, he can fuck up a couple times <laughs> yeah. over the course of learning it, and it doesn't yeah. make no sense. You know, you're not like, yeah. oh my god, this is bullshit, this character yeah. can't die. It's like, yeah, that's the point, yeah. so don't worry yeah. about it. Like, yeah, and another thing it. playing into his long life from being undead is that he has all of this life experience, especially in combat. Yes. So mm-hmm. when he goes into these fights and not knowing what a negator's ability is, it makes sense that he's able to deduce what their ability is from nothing because he has such a big bag of experience that he can pull notions from that lead to the proper way of thinking to find out the ability. So well, and, it makes sense because of his experience that he's able to deduce things so quickly. Well, and even with that, even with yeah. that experience, like, yeah. so Andy knows the character for a long time, decades, right? Yeah. And, and has to figure out their ability and has a little bit of info privy to a little bit of info but even with that he still has to go through these okay this thing is happening and this thing is happening this thing isn't happening which it kind of should be if i'm if i'm you know like thinking it it was initially from that's you my first impression of the ability so it's like there is all this deductive reasoning that you get to see the character go through while trying to figure out you know their abilities even 
if they were privy to some of the, at least a right. little bit of the info. And mm-hmm. and it's it's wild that uh, Andy could know a character for being undead for a long, long time, for decades, and still not know what their ability is, which is yeah. so Hunter-esque, too, where it's yeah. just like, yep. I, I could literally know you. We could be best friends, and we would never exchange our Nen abilities just in case, right? right. Like, it's exactly. Like, it, it, like your it's, social it's security wild. number. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be giving it's that out a bit too much, but yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I already got a couple credit cards in Knoxville. <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh uh, my god! Do you guys have anything else you guys want to talk about, like non-spoiler side of things? Non-spoiler. I'm so excited to get into the spoiler. I know, I know, I know. I, know. I just want to talk about Kurt. No, 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 because there's more character designs. Are incredible ah. inside of undead. Wait, 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 wait. Before before we move on to character designs, one thing yeah. I wanted to point out about the power system yeah. is that like it, yeah. like like you guys were saying, it's not like we're getting this like through exposition that like somebody already had this ability or somebody can teach this ability. It's like yes. we have to get this information through through other people who yeah. aren't like the character that we're observing at the moment, like yes. either, either a narrator or like a complete a completely different character, like period, because we're like even even the characters within the story are uh, basically figuring out their abilities how to use them and like what like kind of like caveats they have to activate to use these abilities and even once they figure that out there's still more behind those abilities that they're going to have to figure out and like unlock and just like be able to use within combat to do what they have to do within the series yeah hell yeah Mm -hmm. very well said definitely Undead yeah, Unlock Power System, like... man, super slept on goat. And, I, and it's hard to, like, it's hard to, like Nick was saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, we have Nen for so long, we, like, praise it as, like, this, like, holy grail of energy systems, the pinnacle of energy systems inside of Shonen storytelling. And, like, me and Kiko and, like, Nick for, like, years are, like, we'll never get so crazy that Hunter's on a hiatus, probably never coming back, and we'll never get a story like that again. We'll never see an energy system like Nen ever again. This is crazy. We'll never get anything close to it. Then Jujutsu Kaisen comes out, and it's like, well, wait a minute now. What's, go- what's, <laughs> what's, what's going on with this Jurioku stuff? I thought we were never going to see nothing like this again. Well, hope, you know, fucking Gege's back don't start hurting because if, if this goes on hiatus, then it's really it. You know what I'm saying? And then, boom, <laughs> Undead Unluck comes out of fucking nowhere with this, like, it's, like, so close together. It's, like, we thought this was never going to happen again. And then Jurioku, and then right behind it is fucking Negator. Two years abilities. apart? Like, yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah, it's, like, yeah. what the fuck is going on right now? And it makes me so excited. Yeah. For the future of shonen manga because it's like it's kind of like with music i don't know if i've said this before but like a new like banging ass song will come out and i'll be like yo this is fucking crazy how are we still making crazy songs like we've had like fucking thousands of years of fucking music history you know what i'm saying like how are we still coming out with fucking mind-blowingly good music you know what i mean yeah. it's like and yeah. then you hear that song and you're like okay probably not going to get too many more of these <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and then five <laughs> ten years goes by you still get a new banging ass track like every couple months you know what i mean it's like mm-hmm. how do they know that but it, it really makes me feel better that like undead unlock and Jesus christ are running at the same time because like it, this is it, the situation in general has been on this axing spree where it's just been so yeah, yeah hard to enjoy something because you know it's probably gonna be gone by like chapter 17. yeah and yeah, then yeah. you got Jujutsu kaisen and under the luck coming in like right behind each other and taking up so much popularity within japan but i'm pretty sure that under the luck hasn't left like top five within like since no, since it came right. out yeah you're right that's so crazy. You can tell. I mean, you can tell by them getting a color cover every fucking four chapters. Like, yeah. That's how you know. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know. Oh, like, they fucking with Japanese. this one. Yeah. They're yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you, don't, you don't get a colored cover or color, you know, chapter cover yeah. every fucking four or five. Six. It's like yeah, it feels like six right. chapters uh, it, it, the most between another color cover. So you're just like, yeah, this is here to stay. Shueisha, you know, like I don't know. It's it's always something to speculate on. Hey, did we, you know, put you know, titties and dong in here early. To, <laughs> so, so Shueisha's like, okay, you're in, you know? <laughs> and then it's like, aha, I got you, bitch. And they switched it, you know? <laughs> you thought this was going to be edgy. Watch yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, man, it's, we really just can't say enough good things about Undead Unluck. I've been on the edge of my seat reading every chapter, every single mm-hmm. week. And, I mean, it's just there's no end in sight to my excitement for this series. And it's just like the highly, most highly recommended series 
in jump for me that's like, okay, obviously we love our Jujutsu Kaisen and our love our Chainsaw Man. They've been around 100 chapters-ish, you know? Yeah. Like, Chainsaw yep. Man's almost 100 chapters. Like, this is 40 fucking chapters. The quickest read, the best quickest read you can do possible in Shueisha right now across yeah. all of their magazines that I know of is yeah. fucking... Undead on rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. Period. Yeah. But easy. Yeah. Easy clap for sure. And I can't wait for that award show. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> character designs. Um, character, character designs, designs in Undead Unluck are really cool. Um, everyone like looks really different. Like, it's not a it's not a mm -hmm. series where it takes place in like modern day Japan. So everyone's got like basic like civilian mm -hmm. garb, and then like you have to rely on like different you know faces in, in order to really tell people apart no this is mm -hmm. set in a world where it's cool to have superhero costumes you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's easy to tell them apart because of that but tozika goes really fucking crazy with it and it's not just that they have these really cool you know armor and, and outfit designs but like their facial designs are like they yeah. didn't have to go so crazy on yeah. every single leg yeah, really of, of, of character designs you know what i'm saying like you could have got away with it but you know with with doing the you know standard anime faces yeah. with these crazy you know outfits you know what i mean but no mm -hmm. everyone's got like some of you know the the, the union cast is just like so yeah. colorful you know what i'm saying you got two yeah. of them it that are like really... three feet tall you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. you got two of them that are like 10 feet tall you yeah. know what i'm saying you got motherfuckers in armor you got motherfuckers mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. in bike helmets you got all yeah, types yeah, of yeah, cold-blooded yeah. ass designs inside of fucking undead <laughs> unlock but at the same time it feels very like, even though this is a series where characters can and do die, it, it, mm -hmm. you might not get that feeling like there's a whole lot of stakes or there's a whole or or that it, it doesn't really get all that dark because of the colorful character designs. It's very it, the characters look like bubble letters. I don't know. I want to yeah, say, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're very, you know, they're very they round. Kind of, uh, they're yeah, they're, they're very kind of round. Like they're very chesty. Like. They're very, you know what I'm saying? They're very blocky, yeah. bulky. You know what I'm saying? It's cartoony. It looks like something Toei would adapt. You know Shit, what I'm it looks something like straight out like Steve Universe. Like, I mean, I don't want to say that. I don't want to. Like, yeah, I don't want to speak that into existence. Toei, get the fuck away from Undead and Luck. But y'all probably wouldn't <laughs> want it because it's not like you yeah, know what I'm saying. Happen. Something that you can do once a week forever for. But you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. What but are you it, it looks. About that? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying like Toei likes to adapt series that are like long running that they can do like one episode a week. You know what I'm saying? For like, oh, ten years. For ten years, years, like no seasons. They don't like seasons. You know, they don't really. No, yeah, I get that. It's just, yeah. There's so much content within you that it's just like uh, yeah. they probably could do it, but I do yeah. want them to stay yeah. away from the my fuck series. Away I from will fucking. Blow, yeah. I will <laughs> blow something yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about the character designs. Um, so. I think we've talked about it on a few, you know, shows, whatever, randomly throughout the years. And the Sun Wukong archetype is tired, right? Yes. But not in un we got we got yes. a Sun Wukong. We got it in Undead Unluck, and it's not tired because it's a secondary character. It's not even like a secondary yes. main character. It's like yeah. yes. Shen is important, but like he's compared to Fuko, Andy, Ooh. even yeah. Juiz, like he's kind of just a guy who's there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. And as far as like you good, Schnooty? Yeah, I don't know what just happened. It's all good, but uh, <laughs> you back. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> as far as like the Sun Wukong archetype, you usually see that in main characters, maybe secondary main characters at yeah. best. You know what I'm saying? Like what char main yeah. character one A at the best. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But to give the Sun Wukong like style of character to a less important character is something that I'm not used to in Western yeah. or in Eastern there's, storytelling. Right. There's so much like there's a very high level of meta within this story, which I wouldn't talk about because that will get crazy. But yeah. <laughs> they talk about other stories within Undead Unluck. You know, yeah. a, a very, you know, popular shoujo manga is referenced a lot. And Journey to the West, they're like, oh, man, he's got the Neoibo. Like, yeah. you know, like it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's great how like they reference all these other other, you know, very important stories. And, and you know. I'm sure the author, you know, Tozuka knows like, okay, this is tropey, you know, like for us to throw another Sun Wukong in here, but like, let's, you know, do them differently. Let's point it out and kind of laugh about it even too. Yeah. And, yeah. and, 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 and still it's, have such it's, a badass character inside yeah. of that. Like, I do love attempt at a gag, so, you know It saying? might like, be my favorite character. I, yeah, I mean, it it's could hard be. To even it could be. It's, 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 it's hard He's to an incredible pick a favorite character. character. Yeah. Definitely. I think, definitely. I think I'm going with baby girl Juiz personally. <laughs> Don't get me started on Juiz. But hey, real quick, real quick. Send by underscore one just followed. Welcome to stream, bro. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Um, another thing about character designs too, though, like we've talked about the union a little bit here, and their character designs, they are all based on different parts of the world. Like all the characters come from different parts of the yeah. world, and that's why they look, they all have very diverse 
character designs, outfits, I armor, gear, that. whatever they're using. Like it's it's they're just very diverse, you know, set of people. And yeah. you know, the Japanese like. Uh, I think maybe a few of them might, you know, there's there's one dark skin character there. I feel like there should be like at least Jewish should be a little darker skin. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, how Japan does. It's like if you're if you're not yeah. if you're not supposed to be depicted as a darker skin character, like even even like a Hispanic, like I don't know, like Hispanic character. Chad, I guess, you know, Sato is like the last one I could think mm-hmm. of where it was like, you know, Jewish is definitely supposed to be a Hispanic character. And she's very. Uh, you know, white. light skinned, yeah. light haired, whitewashed. <laughs> yeah. 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 But hey, Don't at the same time, though, night. hey, hold on, bro, because we're going to get to tussling because that's, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, yeah, that's you your go boys. Get them you done. Hey. All right, anyway, hey. anyway, hey, great character. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, but see, like, yeah, the thing, character. the thing about, um, the thing about, even though, yes, Juiz probably should be a little bit darker and like that representation isn't like all the way there in ways that we would probably prefer, yeah. but it's still mm. like, I love when a Japanese story incorporates other parts of the world especially oh, yeah, yes. like an undead unluck where mm-hmm. the entire world is always involved you know what i'm saying you're in, yes. you're in australia one week you're in fucking brazil right, another yeah. week you're in france another week and you know putting what I'm pins so, on the globe like yeah. this is right. here on yeah. this in the polynesian island randomly yeah. way the fuck out in you know the pacific ocean or something yeah, yeah. and that <laughs> is actually we, we've talked specific several times one. that is a huge weakness in hero yeah. and jujutsu kaisen right yeah. like yeah. There, there's this whole world out there and yeah. all mm-hmm. we get is just this one little island in the you know east mm-hmm. you know in yeah. the pacific right yeah. so it's like so it, a little bit more so for is, hero than jujutsu. Jujutsu, yeah, yeah, yeah. jujutsu is early, and we talked oh, yeah, about yeah. Yeah. how the Shinto pantheon probably is is heavily influenced on yeah. curses and whatnot. Sure, sure. Maybe that's Regar- yeah, regardless. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all agree it'd be nice yes. to get outside of Japan for yes, both of those yes, series, especially yes, hero. Yes, but absolutely. we don't have yeah. that oh, problem yeah. with undead unluck, which is a great Correct. plus. Nip that right yeah. How many places have they been so far? There's been like Brazil, America, Brazil, Australia, Russia. Brazil, uh, America. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, we've been, we've been to like we've All been to through, multiple from New continents. York to like Nevada. It was like through New York mm-hmm. to Nevada, basically yeah. a road trip. I mean, it was pretty yeah. quick within the manga, but yeah, like a mm-hmm. pretty much a road trip across the entire United States. So yeah, there's it's it's really nice to to see, and you get to see monuments. Oh, it's, uh, England. Uh, we saw, you know, uh, or I guess there was that thing where there is the, uh, man, I don't know how much I want to say about that. An yeah, artificial yeah, yeah. monument in a different country. That yeah, is also yeah. In oh, England. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, so like we get to see all these, you know, landmarks and monuments all over the world, which is always super cool. And, and some actually like are, are, um, you know, significant and very relevant to the story. Uh, yeah. You know, they're the uh, this is minorly spoilery, but uh, the Statue of Liberty gets shot. You know, uh, <laughs> we've seen that a million <laughs> times in fiction. Yeah. Planet of the Apes, yeah. fucking mm-hmm. Minority yeah. Report, probably. I don't know. Yeah. You see <laughs> so, it everywhere. <laughs> it's just yeah. It's just a, definitely such a um, just you're just in the story you just feel so so like within the story you're just in, enveloped in in this entire world and even though this is actually earth it feels like you know you just want to explore it like it's like a dance it's almost like dragon ball it's like we're going on an adventure and i don't care what country we're going to it's about to be fun and yeah. then it gets real gets and, but it's still fun the yeah. whole time yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's 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 wild it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy how tosica can keep the story fun while not like taking away from like the tension and the stakes right because mm-hmm. like you still yeah. feel like shit can go down but like it's got that very poppy bubble letter like style, like aesthetic and mm-hmm. like color palette that like makes you think that it's not as serious as it really is. And I think that that's yeah. cool. I think it's almost better to do it that way than to have yeah. it be obviously serious and like, and just be serious. You know what I'm saying? But like, like if, uh, things, it, if things can get lit yeah. while it's not th- like while it doesn't seem like it's going to, then that's a bigger payoff yeah. when it does get lit yeah like. it's, it's like a one piece where it's just like you look at the characters like oh yeah you seem goofy this seems cartoonish and then you get into the mm-hmm. actual story the meat and potatoes of the situation yeah. and then it's just like oh wow this is way deeper and darker oh, than human I auction was. house whoa what are yeah you seen your pink <laughs> as a character <laughs> yeah like <laughs> tequila wolf as tequila a, as wolf. A island quote yeah, unquote yeah. bridge yeah. thing yeah. Like, yeah bridge making thing yeah <laughs> Yeah, man. Wild. I'm always gonna bring up Tequila Wolf. Um, yep. <laughs> I want to go to the spoiler section. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm. I think. I think we're at a point where that makes sense. 
Um, Non-spoiler hopefully... recap, read Undead Unluck. It's yes. fucking awesome. Yes. Get to at least chapter 10. Yes. Give please. it a shot. Please. It's, you, you will not regret it. <laughs> but for those of you who have not read Undead Unluck um, and care about spoilers, we are going to move into the current events portion of our discussion. So hopefully that was a good enough recommendation for those of you who are kind of on the fence with Undead Unluck or outright threw it to the side because of its marketing or its first chapter. Whatever <laughs> happened... You know, with your undead unluck experience that turned you away from it, hopefully we reversed that direction, hit a little little reverse uno, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, read undead unluck, man. It's fucking good, dude. And I don't know, throw preconceived, you know, notions or whatever, leave them at the door and just fucking <laughs> just just go into it and just see what it, what it wants to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, give it mm -hmm. 10 chapters, give it a volume, which is what I say anyway. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just see, yeah, like, yeah. see what the author wants to show you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, like we understand yeah. that gropey, like etchy, like sexual assault is cringy and a deal breaker for a lot of people. It's a deal breaker for us too. Um, mm -hmm. That's totally yep. understandable and justifiable. This handles it a lot differently in a very unexpected mm -hmm. way. If it if it kept those themes throughout, I wouldn't even try to recommend it to people. Yeah, but we wouldn't be talking about it if it right, kept that going. Right, but it because be, uh, yeah, even, even if it. even if it had everything else that it had, that's amazing about it. If it didn't move away from that cringy area Maybe, of its storytelling yeah. i wouldn't even like i i couldn't yeah. do it. like it's yeah it's not i can't fuck yeah, it really that. but <laughs> almost got me first chapter it's tight yeah. mm -hmm. understandably you, so it but is it is tight yes, yes. so please yes. read it yes. but with that being said this is going to go into the spoiler heavy discussion but beforehand we're going to take a brief intermission um to fill up cups run to wherever we need to go for the next like <laughs> three to five minutes but um this has been an incredible conversation you guys thanks for hanging out with us let us know if there are still people in the audience that have not read Undead Unluck and haven't left yet, let us know on Twitter, Discord, wherever. You know what I'm saying? Like, did we put you on? You can tell us right now. It's live. I, I'll, secure flow. You... I'll secure a flow. Yeah, oh, right. we got uh, flow? We got yeah, flow. I, I definitely put we somebody flow. on. That was my uh, goal. I've been pushing this for like, I saw it like six months. I better have put somebody on by now. Yeah. <laughs> no, flow, we got it. We got it. Flow, flow was my challenge tonight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. flow hit me on the, on the tweet. Yeah, and was like, let's see if y'all can get me to read it. I said, what? What? Yeah, I said, yeah. man, pull up. You know what I'm man, saying? We gotta, we gotta shout out Bori Kwame Mihawk too, because he yes. literally read the whole shit so he could yes. watch this show. Like, what a just caught up. Just caught up like ten while minutes we're ago. Watching, yeah. What a yeah. Yeah. While we're doing this, definitely. Okay. Hell yeah. You did it. You shout did out it. to shout out to all of our patrons. Actually, you yes. guys are fucking incredible. Um, yeah, for yeah. those of you who don't know, we review this series. Um, not like on YouTube or anything like that. We do it on Patreon just because mm -hmm. we're already covering like six things on YouTube. So we want to cover the rest of Jump, mm -hmm. but we decided to split it in that kind of way. So if you guys want to, um, for fans of Undead Unluck out there, that's probably one. That's probably our best conversation that we have on the Patreon show. So honestly, if you guys yeah, want to sure. keep that. Um, Sometimes the best conversation across both of our Some, shows. You know, most times shows, the yeah. best conversation across both shows. Honestly, it's yeah. it's really it's really at that point where Undead Unluck is probably the conversation yeah. that i am the most excited to have yeah I, tied with like jujutsu kaisen every week right, you know right. What I'm saying? sure but um but yeah we review it on patreon if you want to check it out we do have the very first episode of that special grade or um patreon exclusive podcast on our youtube channel if you want to see what the vibe of that um of that show is like but yeah we're gonna um we're gonna we're stick gonna around. Go, yeah stick around stick around um current undead unluck fans um not Undead Unluck fans that are just learning about it through this recommendation. Let us know how we did. Let us know if you're going to read it. Let us know anything at all. But uh, we yeah. will be back shortly. Give us about three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys. We'll see you in a, we'll see you in a moment. This episode is brought to you by the Project Manga Patreon, the best way for viewers to support the project and allow us a means to keep providing new and quality content to our subscribers. Go to patreon.com slash projectmanga and find out more about the perks we have available to patrons, including early access to all of our content and exclusive videos like behind-the-scenes footage and additional manga reviews. That's patreon.com slash projectmanga. All right. We are back. We're back. And you know what Bad. time it is. All right. <laughs> Here we Everybody go. Everybody that is afraid of spoilers is gone. <laughs> yeah. Everyone that <laughs> does not care about spoilers or is current in Undead Unluck is here. And <laughs> let me tell you something. Okay. We review a lot of things. There's a lot of incredible Chainsaw Man, Junsutsu Kaisen, One Piece, My Hero Academia analyst reviewers out there. But Undead Unluck is so new. And I feel like we could comfortably say 
Ain't nobody doing it like us on Undead Unluck. Okay. Let's let's uh let's start with uh, a little throwback to uh to a previous uh special grade podcast we did. Yeah. Where we uh we called something a little special, you know what I mean? Like to to give uh the audience a little taste of the depth of like, you know, the theories that you can come up with, you know, based on what you're reading, right? So uh very recently, very recently in Undead Unluck, I forget the chapter, maybe y'all can help me out, but like we we got um acknowledgement that to you from me, or is it from me to you? The the, the shoujo manga in Undead Unluck that um that Fuko has read, right? Has 101 volumes in it, right? Yes, sir. And then, and then <laughs> they they mentioned Sh- Shueisha mentioned right that like uh you know well, first chap- hold on first first oh, yeah, inside go, of that chapter that came out you were like talking about that scene and mm-hmm. you were like yeah so the spoil arc is volumes uh 11 through 18 or some shit yeah right, right? you, you said that you you, you yeah. mentioned that it was 11 18 and then but yeah no 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 no, no, no. here's what i always say though, volumes like... 11 through 18 in oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. manga and then i was like yes those are the chapters in the spoil arc in yes. undead unlock yes. yeah, yeah, yeah so so we we were thinking like oh shit like since the manga in the manga the manga within undead unluck is yeah. 101 volumes yeah perhaps Undead Unluck as a series will be 101 chapters. But then yeah. we were like, ah, but it doesn't make sense because Billy's betrayal arc, yeah. they said mm-hmm. the volume started volume uh, 30, right? Yeah. But yeah. Um, but in the Undead Unluck, in, it was chapter 20. And we were like, huh, it's, it's so strange that, like, mm-hmm. that it would be like that. It, it doesn't seem to match up. So we were like, eh, I guess it doesn't really make sense, even though this is our <laughs> theory or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Then, like, two weeks later... Tozuka issued a correction and said, yeah. like, oh, damn, actually, uh, Billy's Betrayal Arc should start uh, volume 20 of uh, To You From Me. And it's yeah, like, yeah. What? And it's like, wait, 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 so wait, we're we still on right. track. Wait, we wait, were wait right. we're still good. Yeah, yeah we were right. I was the one, wait, I was like, no, that's wrong. Those, yeah. that's, those, those don't line up. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I was so on board with it, too. When you and guys then you said, about Kiko, it. you were like, that means we're getting Ragnarok on chapter 101. Oh, on, yeah, and then you were like, well, wait, because this doesn't really, like, add up with, like, things. And then yeah. Shueisha or Tozuka corrected it. And it's like, yeah. mm-hmm. Ragnarok at chapter 101 is still alive, yeah. baby. Yeah. Still yeah. alive. There's 101 yeah. penalties, right? Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's, right. it's, 101 it's penalties, just 101 101. penalties. Yeah. 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 There's that's just level of shit you can get it to. It's but, so fun. Okay, it's going so into like the current events talk of like this most recent chapter, I just want to say, Nick, you fucking called this chapter in regard to how we were mm. going to get Andy's backstory through Autumn, like Yeah. Reading mm-hmm. his story. Piercing in book Andy form. And, yeah. and opening up his quote unquote book and yeah. we'll get his backstory through the book that Autumn quote unquote yeah. uh unlocked. Like ooh, fucking ooh, killed, the, killed the game, bro. Killed so the game, ready bro. for this. Yeah, it's oh. wild how uh Anna Un drew you know, uh, autumn claw for this. Th- like, it, it's not actually autumn, right? Like, I mean, it is, but it's not. I mean, just because of right. how. But it's so autumn crazy that their, their artifact can literally, like, bring yeah. out a piece yeah. of an Uma and use its ability. Yeah. Ano can draw artifacts. I, I'm, I'm buckling down. I'm ten toes down <laughs> yeah. on that. Ano yeah. draws Blade Runner. That, drawing other artifacts? Yeah. yeah, he, yeah. Can draw, he can definitely draw other artifacts. He can draw, like, negator parts and he can draw Uma parts. He can definitely draw. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. cuz when, when they drew when they drew um Andy's left arm to after Anun cut their left arm off and drew and put Andy's left arm on there to do volcanic oh, bullet or whatever. Yeah. They Andy use, still had his arm. Yeah. Yeah. Andy still yeah. had yeah. his arm too. That's right. So and so yeah. Anun could use uh, undead. Yeah. Yes. So it's yes. like and it's I like Anun creates undead. like draws into existence like a facsimile of you know mm-hmm. the negators like a bit because i would think like when you brought up like andy still had his arm that reminds me that i did think after oh. i read that chapter mm-hmm. that maybe the original negator ability doesn't or the original negator doesn't have access to their to their ability while ano un is using it but andy's arm was it, it wasn't Today. actually andy's arm yeah, yeah it was yeah yeah so i feel like ano's gonna draw arc and that's how they so that's how somebody's got to uh, 11 arcs or 12. I don't know if we get another. Well, because. Oh, cause an arc for arc, everyone? An uh, arc for everyone. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. Maybe. And that's how they go into like loops. Wait, going, wait, no, like no, no, once no, they no. figure they, that they, out, they, they can keep doing loops over and over again until they beat them because they all have their memories. 
Yo, yeah, they, they can't, they can't uh, draw eleven arcs because like he can only draw like one thing at a time. So no, but like, you could, but you yeah. could, um, yeah. but couldn't you um, draw one, use it to? Yes. I, I mean, do you, do you need to use it while Ragnarok is happening, or is it yeah. like a, I use it to prepare myself for Ragnarok? Yeah. I'm Gucci, mm-hmm. so you use it, create a new one, use it, create a new one. I don't know, like yep. and I, dispel I think it's worth each one when they get there. Yeah, yes. each arc yes. dispels oh, once. My I God. take it's done, one, you know, yeah. and then dispel. Then I send, you know, whoever, you know. Phil, sure. whatever. Yeah. And, and yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like that would be. That seems so. I don't know. Like I, I like that a lot, but I also almost don't want that. To, it's just so. Yeah. It's so broken. Like yeah. it, it is. It is. It is. It's a lot. And like with, what, what with what we're predicting, Ragnarok being at 101 chapters. Um, if they all come back next time, I feel like. It's such a leg up to win because, like, right away from the first penalty, um, and that's, I guess that's the other thing, too, is, like, how many, when are these, you know, like, when is Jewies, so Jewies is, you know, goes, takes Ark and on the loop and goes back every time. When does she, like, spawn? At what time, what period in this, because if you don't complete a quest within, uh, you know, you don't, not even complete the quest, if you don't, um, like fulfill the prerequisite within 90 days, I want to say, you get a penalty no matter what. Like you yeah. don't even get to try yeah. the quest yeah. and you get right. a penalty. That is right. so, so how many penalties happen before Juiz is even back on the planet or right. maybe yeah. Juiz yeah. starts from the beginning, but then Juiz has to have some anti-aging ability. Maybe that's what Ark also does. It's it's They, they, did, talk really about anti, about. they did talk about anti-aging tech. Uh, I think mm-hmm. it was yeah. Uh, well, yeah, when they were fighting against uh, Gina. Gina, and Gina yeah. was what, yeah. like 50 60 so yeah, yeah but that was that was, that was artificial she was, like, yeah she was yeah, using that, unchanged but, on herself wasn't she yeah that no, was cosmetic no no and it was, no, wait, no, 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 no. It was both it was, it was just makeup it was just makeup i think yeah she's an said. external targeting type yeah that's right and like uh, she and so was she, using unchanged on just like gara fucking sand yeah, no, on no, the makeup. Oh, she yeah. she literally said anti-aging tech yes oh. from nico from nico yeah, I think I think both things were. I mean, she didn't say um, from Nico, but I think you can assume from Nico. Yeah, yeah, right? from, from yeah. Nico. I'm pretty confident that she said both of those things were happening to make her. Oh look yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. like she was using her, you know, external makeup, targeting yeah. type on on the you know whatever. Uh, yeah, it, like holding her you know body parts in place too, because Andy's like. She's got a saggy ass, I, I, you know. Like I guarantee, like it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's not gonna and, and, hit like it would before. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really gonna have to knock the she's dust off that, uh, you know. Not, not, you but. see me? <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, but yes, I think um, sending arc back with everybody, or you know, multiple arcs back with everybody, mm-hmm. just so. But maybe just two though, like Andy and Fuko. Now, because I was the big proponent of Fuko will somehow get more um, negator points. I don't even know what the fuck we call them. She will Union be points, one. union points to be number one, and then she gets to take Ark back, and she gets to do it her way the next time, right. which obviously is going to be far more like you know based in you know morality. Like she's going to yeah. like when Billy's talking about just let's just nuke the whole fucking continent so we can just get rid of these Umas real quick. And and Juiz even Juiz is against that. But you know early on from you know the union standpoint on how they're like we're killing Fuko and we're capturing Andy. Like we Fuko's too much of a fucking outlier and we don't want uh, unluck running wild basically on this planet. And we need to have Andy captured basically so we can have a bench. That, yeah. That's the other thing too. Yeah. That they never really re-explored is having a bench of negators imprisoned that yeah, they can the just pull out. off the bench. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they can. I just, mean, boom. you got the dude who can't die. Do you really need to take anybody else? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of ways to deal with immortality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, that's not the something old, that we really uh, uh, see them explore too much in Undead Unlucky yet. But yeah, I mean, if yeah. UQ Holder and you yeah. know, fucking other immortality series have taught me anything, it's that's the first thing you do, like when you have an immortal character in your series, is find ways to pacify them. You know what right. I mean, so that you can have a yeah. story. And, yeah. and Unchanged was the one. I mean, Gina was the one to be able to do it. You know, she can put yeah. Andy's head into an Unchanged bubble, and he cannot regenerate. And then she could literally yeah. have thrown that in the depths of the ocean, and then mm-hmm. Andy's, you know, Cooked. effectively, Talk. yeah, he's he's out he's of off, here. Yeah. He's off the map. But, but he's not because Ragnarok will happen. Yes. the Earth will mm-hmm. be destroyed. He yeah. will just regenerate. The Earth will yeah. come back, yes. and he yeah. will be on the Earth as he has. 
for yeah, however yeah, many yeah, times, yeah. however many loops he's, yeah. he's been but on. But at least so, for, yeah, that but loop, for, for that loop, until yeah, Gina yeah. dies. Or yeah. until Gina dies. Yes. Sure, yeah, yes, correct. yes. Yeah. But, um, yeah. so Bariqua Mihawk, okay, so Gina talks about gaining, quote unquote, new rules. New rules. I don't think yeah. we've gotten a thorough explanation on that yet. No what way. do you guys think about this? Well, we were talking about right. it on our previous review. We got into like once we like it, uh, there's always a point in our Undead Unluck reviews where we start off talking about the chapter, everything's cool. And then like it's not even necessarily <laughs> when we go into theory time. It's just yeah. like all of a sudden the tone of the conversation will just shift <laughs> and we'll all just start blowing each other's minds. Yeah. Boom, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, boom, yeah. boom, 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 till the end of the segment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 that's fun. But the one of the most recent conversations that we had like that was talking about like okay well these negator abilities mm -hmm. let me see if I can remember because um, it was it was Ano Ano Un Ano Un was saying like you all like you and Fuko talking to Andy and Fuko yes. you're like you're too bound by your own rules right yes. like like you have to you think outside the box you have to get past these yes. rules mm -hmm. and so like yeah. I, I think this is a slightly different thing than what Boric Wemihak is talking about but I think it's related I think they're tied right? together yeah they're tied okay. together right oh, okay right. so yeah. oh, okay okay okay. Yeah. So, so uh, Ana Un was kind of saying like break through your rules. Like like yes. don't let your rules confine your ability because it might be more powerful than you think it is. I yeah. think this yeah. is a good throwback to um uh Crocodile talking to Luffy, right? Like yeah. you're weak. Like you you've not even like explored the bounds of your yeah. of your devil fruit ability, right? There's yeah. so much depth there, right? So I think this is like a very similar situation. Yeah. Now, yeah. in the Gina situation, Gina definitely said like as she was dying, right? Like like uh, I was really hoping to gain more rules, and yeah. and uh, Kaizo Kuo mentioned in the chat that like yeah, like when when you fail a, a quest, um, yes. you you get like penalties, and penalties yes. add rules. Um, but like it, it seemed like a, it could be the it could be that's what she was talking about, but it seemed more personal to her. Like I want to gain more rules. Yeah. I think it benefit. was both. I really think it was both because the way she talked about you know. How it was it was misdirection for her character to be like I I love things that don't change like I right. never want to get old I always want to stay the you know 16 years old like mm -hmm. I always want things to be the way they were but that wasn't really the truth because when she sees Foucault's painting and their stars Foucault drew stars before Galaxy Uma existed yeah. and, and 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 she's like wow I never thought of that like why would you do this and they're like well we're taught in school that it's just the moon up there right and the moon and the sun are the only two things up there yeah and and and, and that's lonely and I, I just, just gave thought, him some friends yeah yeah. Yeah. I, yeah i just gave him some friends yeah yeah, 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 and she, yeah you know and you can you can see you know like that start to you know eat into the portrayed character of gina where she's yeah. she's already starting to be like deep down she does want change and she's like she wants she's new information things, but she doesn't want the things that she's already familiar with to change also, I, think she, I think she even did. She wanted things to not be stagnant and for new rules to be to uh, be okay. to come. Yeah, because they she just doesn't even though like that's what she was saying, like towards the end of that, she changes her tune on it and says, you know, like this is actually how I really feel. Yeah. You know, so I think um it's it's both that she wanted to advance her own ability and add new rules or see adding rules to your ability and taking away rules. I feel like can mean the same thing, right? Like I'm adding new levels, so there's new facets of my ability. So like technically, there's new rules. But I'm also but taking to... away limiters, so there I can go yes. down this direction with as far as new things too. Yes. So yes. like I can either go up or down with new both. stuff, and yeah, and see like going back to what um, Nick was talking about, like when we were talking about like what new rules means or what Ano Un was saying when they were um, talking to Andy and Fuko about unlocking more of their, or not unlocking more of their abilities, but just like taking away the limiter that they placed on themselves by thinking that yeah. there is a set way that their ability is supposed to work. And that's true up to like that amount of information. The amount of information mm -hmm. they have is all correct. There's just so much more information beyond that that they don't know about. So they think that it's only this and they're limiting themselves right. because they think it's inside of this box. But we were talking about it mm -hmm. on the review and I was and I was attributing it to um, secondary evolutions or not secondary evolutions inside of X-Men, but just like not knowing your full potential because Emma Frost mm -hmm. can read an, a mutant's mind 
and know what the full extent of their abilities is. And then she'll mm. tell that mutant, this is what your full range of capabilities are. And then that mutant can then start training themselves in those areas to sure. reach that maximum potential. I attributed it mm -hmm. to, you know, Bobby Drake Iceman. He starts off as a snowman. Then he's like, wait a minute, this snow is a little bit too soft. I can harden this. I got ice now. You know what I'm saying? And then his character evolves in that way for a while where he just gets colder and colder until Emma Frost tells him, you're not controlling cold. You're not shooting ice beams out of of your hand kid you control the rate at which molecules vibrate entirely that is your power you know what i'm saying like that kind of shit is what we could see inside of undead unluck with these negator abilities because it makes it seem to us on the surface level and this series is all about misdirection it makes it mm -hmm. seem to us on the surface level that your ability is move or strength caveat that's it you know what i'm saying your ability can do this one thing this right. is the one way you beat it you know what i'm saying right but yeah. If it, if it, so, if it, yeah, it could be more. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, Boriqui, Boriqui Mihawk mentioned another great example of this conversation in the form of when Victor came out. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And Victor came out and says, uh, they, they said in the chat, right? Like, I'm not gonna be bound by any rule. Like, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, like, like, like that is like a straight, you know, almost correlation to what Ano Un is saying. You know what I mean? Like, don't, mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. bound yourself by these rules. Like, find a way beyond them. And Victor, obviously has you know what i mean like just this incredible mastery of the undead ability way more oh, than yeah. than andy ever has you know it's yeah. so awesome it yeah yeah and, it, and it, I, it, I have it, a crazy it, theory about uh, uh andy and and uh victor and, and this but i'll, I'll bring it up later go go ooh, ahead Shinudi. Yeah, yeah, i was just gonna say that like that like this was also brought up in the uh unrepair arc when like you when you reach the un end of the unrepair arc you get this little conversation between like rip and andy and he's like oh yeah no we'll be fine because unlike you we can go to the next Step. So like yeah. now that like was it now that Anno was like talking about like oh yeah you're too bound by your rules I'm thinking that this might have something to do with that like oh yeah there's sure. another step to like having a negation mm -hmm. and the fact that like the negator abilities are basically negations to rules themselves so like there's got to be like you either negate more rules or you gain more rules in general so yeah oh yeah, yeah. like yeah. like what if I I, I going, going off what you're saying directions. there Snooty so like so like like. So Victor slash Andy has been around since the rule of death was added. We got that that dialogue, right? And um, and so what if like undead is tied to the rule of death? And yes, as you're saying, like what if you gained more rules? And what gaining more rules would imply is that there is a negation possible for that rule, yes. right? Like like ooh, I love that. Yeah yeah yeah. I, that. Yeah, having more rules added by way of penalty. Right. gives a negator more things to negate right yeah. like or, right. more yes. more possibilities right. different ways to use it and um the victor thing like so the no rule can tie me down in bold including you or whatever he's saying yeah. to spoil yeah because spoil is say, saying like how dare you stand up to the rules themselves and uma is the rule like right. we right we dictate how shit works right like and 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 when victor is saying that he is still bound by Spoil's rules. He's just beating Spoil, which is weird, you know. Like, yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> and 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 like he's being bound by Negator rules. I mean, Shen reverses, you know, whatever he wants to do, and and you know, Shen standing on top of the Nyoibo from fucking a mile away, looking at fucking Victor and and making sure Victor is doing the opposite of what he's trying to do. So it's it's not the actuality i don't believe of physically negating rules it's beating them right like yeah, it's sure. it's 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 finding a different way around like them loop, loopholes and, and loopholes uh, and, yeah. And, yeah. and using yeah. using rules to your advantage like like as you're saying with shen right like shen is a is a is a crazy has a crazy ability because shen can look at you and mm -hmm. like like what what if you were like trying to use your ability in some way right and he yeah. looks at you one eye closed he likes you and it, what if that forces your ability to work in the exact opposite way? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like w w what we've gotten so far with Shen is like, oh, I'm going to kick you with my right leg and hit you yeah. on this side. Oh, mm -hmm. nope. You actually kick with your left leg and hit this side, yeah. right? Yeah. Or like, I'm, I want to attack you. I'm going to want to not attack you, right? Yeah. I'm not going to do that. But what if, what if he could like go a meta level and be like, your ability works like this. I'm going to make it work like that. You yeah. know what I mean? So, Opposite of what it should work. Yeah. So he's the only one who can kill Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. yeah. Wow. That'd be crazy. That's crazy. Because like, and I was thinking like, when think about what Victor can do, he can make like what like eight, ten versions of himself by shooting off his fingers. 
So I think like, he could shoot his toes off. I bet he can make 20, 50. Who knows? He could shoot out and just it seems like it, right. it's in it just there's no limit to it really so, so far. Going into and, uh oh go or, go ahead, Shuni. Finish yeah, your thoughts. Yeah, oh, I, was just yeah. say, I was just gonna say like uh, on top of like him being able to like choose where he can regenerate, whether he chooses to regenerate from like a bullet or like a different clone or whatever, like you can't like you can't kill his consciousness. So maybe that's how he figured out how to like yeah. get like a loophole through oh, his sure. like mm. negation. Because mm. like you can't kill his cells and you can't kill like his like consciousness. So obviously he can make more of himself. But like I guess if you're making too much, you end up with like a twice situation where it's like you know yeah. you might beat on yourself or something like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like maybe he's just like taking that loophole and like expanding on like what that could mean through the meaning yeah. itself. Mm. Sure. Yeah. So Knox. Yeah. Uh were you, what were you going to go with? Uh, like, there's I, a, que there's a, a question in the chat. Oh yeah, go that, for it. Go for it. Um, that, that was interesting because um yeah. Malone Reloaden. Is it Malone? That's self, Malone? That, that's, I, that's I know self style Kozuki Odin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I Malone, just never it's knew. Malone. Is it Malone? Okay, okay. It's from yeah. JoJo. Ah. There we go. That's why. That's why. So here's a question, though. How does Ano Un's statement about a negator not being bound by rules connect to negator abilities based off of conditions like Shen and Fuko? So you're talking about the condition inside of Shen's ability where he has to be fond of his target. I think that Ano Un's statement can still be applied to Shen's negator ability, even though it has a condition. I think that condition stays there. I think that he still has to be fond of the target, but the limits of untruth are just deeper than yeah. what we have seen so far after yeah. that condition has been met. So he looks at you, he likes you, and then, like Nick was saying, his negator ability from what we understand right now is you want to kick me with your right leg, well, you kick me with your left leg. But if we're breaking past those personal limiters that we set for our own abilities, and we're breaking through those limiters like Ano Un is suggesting, that condition still stays there. You still have to like me, but instead of just like redirecting or making the exact opposite action happen, untruth could really just be like, now you can't lie to me. You know what I'm True. saying? Like, I'm a polygraph test now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or... Like, truth is what I decide it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You never know, like, how or deep it could really flipping. get when you have, like, when you have abilities that are based on concepts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, well, I was just saying, like, even, well, like, <laughs> what Nick was saying about flipping a negator's ability, you know, like, Andy can't die. And if he gets a, you know, if Shen. Levels up you know, or something. Levels yeah. up. Yeah, he Unlocks removes more himself knowledge from some of ability. Rules. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> removes some rules from himself, whatever. Could either, you know, make Andy actually die. But that's that's an extreme. I don't think that's going to happen. Right, right. But think about, like, so for Shen's ability, he has to like you in order for you to be affected by it, which once you're affected by it, you're going to do the opposite of yeah. whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. Since he needs to like you, I don't know, somehow could he negate his own condition to where it's like, now I have to dislike you and I can make it work? Because then it gets, you start negating your own condition. But he's not uh, self-targeting. Yeah, it's hard to say, but right, maybe yeah. that's part because of the Because otherwise, because otherwise he could just say, fuck it. And like, you know what I'm saying? Not just, I, I flip it to where I dislike you now, but just like, I can trick my ability into... Like yeah. thinking that I like you, you know what I'm saying? You, so I can, yeah. But you you raise an interesting point, like self targeting, right? Like yeah. or or external targeting, right? Yeah. What does yeah. that have to do with anything? You know what I mean? Like yeah. like why why is undead self targeting? Mm -hmm. Why can't it be external targeting? Like what what about undead? Yo, you know? Shen so can like, switch your your type, maybe. That would maybe or or and switch or it from like, self targeting to external. <laughs> But mostly, mostly, I'm getting at the but point. Then doing like, that to himself, if, yeah, right, yeah, we're doing it to himself. Or yeah. what if there's just like another tier of rules where it's like, right now we're talking about, oh, I can't die, or yeah. I can make you not have your truth. But at a higher yeah. level, then we're talking about like self-targeting, external yeah. targeting, compulsory, voluntary, yeah. these kind of things. Like maybe those yeah. are also rules that are in play that can be negated in some way, or maybe or, you or just don't have like, over. yeah, or maybe there is like at a higher level of understanding negator rules. There just is. Mm -hmm. any types there's no self-targeting sure. there's no compulsory there's none of those words you just control the concept you literally right. just control the entire idea in mm -hmm. every Brute. way of truth of justice of death yeah. of you know and you can do it external you know um uh self-targeting you can do you know whatever it's mm -hmm. literally you are that concept now
the implication no, of just the word truth and the negation of yeah. the yes. concept of truth it can be so ridiculous because like reality itself can be truth so it's like can she, I, I, I doubt that they're gonna go that far i i, I don't i don't want to think of shin just being able to bend reality by looking <laughs> yo at shiloh it. has a right. great point though maybe that's how he gets clones right exactly yeah right. because because yeah. like victor you know what i'm saying maybe transcends that like base or blanket you know rule system on right. earth because he's like, obviously what if, a higher uh, being than everyone else you know what i'm saying maybe he's figured right. it out and he can fucking like external target you know, yes, exactly. People, you know what I so mean? Andy's yeah. self-targeting, and then yeah. Andy, say for example, shoots out a, a finger bullet. Yeah. And then there's a there's a self, and yeah. there's an external, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you have to pick which one is self and which one is external because there's yeah. cases where like you know cut your head off, and well I guess your head is always part of yourself or something. But yeah. re regardless, yeah. what if you normally you're self-targeting, but Victor. Once the finger bullet is separated, it's, you yeah. can external target the yeah. finger bullet, and then. Yeah. grow out from there oh yeah. damn you would yeah, think yeah. that because yeah. it's still a part of your body that it's still self-targeting but there's two like selves Parts. now yeah there's yeah. two yeah yeah so, so it would be external even though it's still self but yeah, that would be some shit it, tozuka like. could write that tozuka could make yeah, that make yeah. sense <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, just the I really need to see the rest of the union's negator abilities like in action cuz yeah. Jui yeah. snapped like crazy. Yeah. Nico has to be like unforgettable or like I'm pretty sure Kiko said that on the yeah. Yeah. on the show. That's like, Kiko's like, idea, yep. What is it? You know, like, yeah. un unforgettable. Like, Nico's yeah. unforgettable. Unforgettable. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh so Man, I, I kind of have a theory too, but I know Nick wants to get to his, but also uh, Melo Yenis in the chat, you know, says, it, you know, highlighted the comment. If Uma, yeah. you know, if Uma part of God is Victor slash, you know, Andy Kane, since the apocalypse is based on Christi Christianity mythology and Victor is Hebrew for conqueror, you know, I, I have something in that same vein, you know, because I think it's very... Um, I don't know. Nick, I feel like you should say yours first, though. Man, like, I, I said Tozuka is no, let's, let's God. Keep, let's keep going. We got I mean, plenty of time. Said, you said Ano Un is Tozuka. Yeah, which is God. I said all of those yeah, things Yeah, but together. like Ano oh, Un sure. being Tozuka, like, like, is, like, like, Tozuka, like, being, like, God, like, coming out of a loop. Like, someone said, like, going into, like, the office or whatever, and, like, coming out of the loop like into like a wormhole going into Tozuka's it was Nick yeah. right. and Nick is fucking Nick like said that or, and yeah, yeah. Like, like, like imagine imagine every loop imagine yeah. every loop is yeah. you know a mangaka drawing yeah. uh, a potential way Undead Unluck could go yeah. and then mm -hmm. Undead Unluck happens you know we in reality are reading Undead Unluck and you know like you, you, you'd be reading this draft and it's like yeah. oh shitty ending no I'm gonna I'm gonna crumple up this manuscript and throw yeah. it in the trash right yeah. that's a loop yep each loop is a, loop. a draft loop. because fucking Tozuka like like they don't win, so I'm not going to yeah. use this. I'm not going to yep. serialize. I'm not going to publish this. It wasn't because good enough. Some some writers, some yeah. writers like Stephen King. He he says that like um, characters write themselves. You know what yeah. I mean? Like when he when he's when he's trying to think of like what a character is going to do, he just thinks like, ah, oh, what would this character do? And the character like you know tells him in his mind like what they would do in the situation. He writes it right. So like yeah. it, it's possible that like uh, Tozuka could be a similar writer and be like, what would uh, Juiz and Andy do in this situation? Right? And it's like, uh, they would do this and fail. Yeah. And I'm mm -hmm. going to crumple that up and call it a loop and and we're going to start over. You know what I mean? Because yeah. yeah. I'm not comfortable finishing this story and. Until, until the story ends with a happy yeah. ending. Quote, the unquote, loops say, right? are mm -hmm. representative of like Tozuka's potential like insecurity of like how to end a story like right. this. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So like it's like they could do it this way. No, it's not good enough. They could do it this way. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that, yeah. that would be so epic if we come wild. out of a loop yeah. into that studio and actually like see Tozuka there. I loved that idea. I could see it with how on meta on that on yeah, 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 yeah. But see like if Ano Un is the see, because when we were talking about it on the review and you said Ano Un is Tozuka, I thought like that, like if Ano Un is Tozuka inside of Undead Unluck, then God is still someone else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though it I makes sense that, to, yeah, yeah, even though it makes sense that, that God is both of them. them. Yeah. And I have God being a third person now, too, uh, mm. in, in, my, well, in my theory here today. It, it's interesting because, like, yes, ap Apocalypse, Apocalypse is definitely like a Christian thing. And, and, yes. and, and as uh, Melo said, I think in the, in the chat, like Victor. Yeah. Victor is Hebrew for conqueror, but like yeah. Vic, they they make a big point of Vic Thor and Ragnarok mm -hmm. is a Norse mythology, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. thing, right? So it's mm -hmm. like it's it's interesting, like to to play with these uh, you know religious themes um, yes. And, yes. And, and and figure out like what what 
because uh, there's Stonehenge, Stonehenge, Stonehenge yeah. in in, yeah. in, in, in you know where, where uh, the uh, Union base is or whatever, or it's like a Stonehenge replica that's in Australia. I don't Kaiser think Kuhl. so. Kaiser, I don't no, think. No. No, it is. It is though because, I, I, because I know. Stonehenge I know that. is not a full circle in reality, right? But there literally okay. is a Stonehenge replica in Australia. Kaizo yeah. has told us about it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, like, yeah. and they and they've said that the Union base is in Australia. You know what I mean? So like, it like it like has well, to be in Australia. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's fine. But the whole thing about them showing up in Australia, they came out of the broken bleach sky, right? Like they were teleported to Australia. They didn't just like come up out of the ground out of no. They came out of the ground was... from burn, from burn, wait, burn, wait, wait, wait. burn. It, burn it, out it, no, no, no. But it, we were saying it's say possible that, like, that burn burn through the ground in another direct. Like we don't know where under the ground they actually are. But like if, or and and now that there's confirmation here, I mean I I don't remember that information coming up that Stonehenge being the full circle, you know, is a replica in in Australia because Kaiser no, has been there. He said it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 and I get, I, I get that. I, I 100% <laughs> believe that. But just when that scene is first given, not the, not the Stonehenge scene. Sure, that sure. was, that was a, that was a part of like the theory is that uh, the Union is under Australia because they come out in Australia the first time you see them. But yeah. it was the broken bleach guy and the that uh, Uma oh, with sure. the fucking with the 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 you know dice, D&D or, dice face. Yeah, 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 yeah the D and D dice face. You know. Uma is the one teleporting them around, and that's how they came out to Australia that right. first time. But that's that's sure. still really cool that, that that is a replica in Australia, and that that one because then that does further that yeah. that you know like that's that's definitely where where it is. Then that makes right. a lot of sense. But yeah, um, the thing about the Norse mythology and the, the Christian mythology being um, you know entwined here when Victor is out. Um, Victor asks Shen, how do you know about me, right? And he doesn't really answer. And and you just see Shen kind of like fanboying over him. Like, I couldn't wait to see Victor. Like, this is so yeah, exciting yeah, for me, really. Yeah. And and he says, I'm a human. I'm not Taurus, and I'm not God. He says Taurus, T-O-R-S, you sure. know, and, and I'm not either. I'm not Taurus, and I'm not God, which Thor is also a God. And, yeah. But it's it feels a lot to me like... Andy slash Victor is another incarnation of God, but this one would be Jesus, the human one for him to sure. say, I sure. am human and I have found ways around these rules, which Jesus has done, right? Like it's, it just Ooh. seems, and he's been around since the start of time for Christians, you know, <laughs> right, uh, not right. actual time, but, but you know, like that's, that just really fit well when I was reading that. I'm like, sure. so we're going to combine these two mythologies and use them kind of intertwined their their similar concepts of you know right up uh, you know apocalypse and ragnarok you know and thor slash god and mm-hmm. uh, you know, all there hasn't been any other mention i don't believe of any other norse gods but you know if that starts to happen and there's some other tie with like negators because i just feel like there's negators that are divine negators is what it feels like like Anno um oh. and and Victor in particular are you know branches of God God right. God's alter egos to make it harder or to make it make it harder on God to keep winning right like I need to throw in now new negators with other level divine abilities that are going to because I keep winning the loop keeps going I, right, I keep right. winning I need to make this more difficult on myself Okay. Okay. Since you mentioned new negators, let's 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 bring up a theory that we were uh, talking about earlier today in our, in our uh, project manga chat or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, just just the the three of us or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Me, Knox, and Kiko. Um, so, theory. Uh, this is as we are reading on that unluck. This is Foucault's first loop ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? So like in, this in is the first we, time we know, unluck as a negator yes. has existed yep. in this yeah. timeline. Yep. This yeah. this yep. loop is the first loop that the ability unluck has ever happened. Um mm-hmm. and we we know definitively from, you know, the flashbacks we've seen through touching artifacts that yep. things like Victor, Juiz, Nico, um Gina, uh, they they have been through several loops, you know what I mean? Um mm-hmm. but but Foucault theory uh, this is her literal first loop, and I have two mm-hmm. pieces of, of evidence for this theory. I'll have a third one, I bet, that you didn't ooh, have either. Ooh, good, good, good. So, uh, piece of evidence one, chapter one, very first chapter, um, negator hunters from the Union, I, I think uh, they are from. Yes, but yeah, ne- yeah, negator yes. hunters are yep. going after Andy and Foucault. 
and yep. and they and they when they're talking about Andy, they obviously know who Andy is because yes, like Andy has been, been around in this forever. loop. And yeah. They they captured Andy for fifty years or fifteen yep. or however many years it was. Right, they had him for um, ten years, but they captured him fifty yeah, years ago. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, ten years. Right. So, but they call they refer to Fuko as a new breed. Right. Yes. What the hell does that mean? Yeah. It sounds like a a new a, a new negator ability has manifested itself in this mm-hmm. loop for the first time. Two second second piece of evidence. Uh, this is chapter nine. The first time we see Apocalypse, right? So uh, we have just had the fight between Fuko and Andy and Gina. Uh, Fuko and Andy win. Uh, they go to a restaurant. They're going to have some, you know, celebratory vodka and uh, that die twenty, dice, you know, Uma. dice yeah. Uma or whatever. Uh, grabs them and throws them into the union headquarters and yep. apocalypse apocalypse looks at fuko and you can go to the panel and yep. and it's only showing fuko right yep. now andy has never been in this loop as far yep. as we understand never been in this loop part of the union but he says um he he calls uh fuko fresh blood That's right, right? Mm-hmm. like this is her first time yep. uh you know, being part of the union, being in this, you know, you know, group of negators, being knowledgeable about negators. Yeah. But why didn't Apocalypse also show in this panel, you know what I mean? Also Andy, because they're sitting right next to each other. Obviously the panel. New. Yeah, they're, they're both new. As, yeah. As, yeah. But Apocalypse knows who Andy is because Apocalypse has memories of all the past loops and yeah. knows who Victor is and or and Andy is and knows that Andy has been a negator this whole time. So like it seems like this is Foucault's first loop, which implies many things. It implies that like negator abilities can manifest themselves fresh as if there are new rules, new Umas, you know what I mean? So it's like that's just like I don't really really know like what you can draw from that conclusion, but like it's just a crazy thing to think that about. Is really crazy. Yeah. What what yeah. if like okay, so we know that the union is trying to hunt negators so that they can, you know, boost that. their forces. Here. Yeah. What if, like, they, yeah. they're trying to hunt... Well, they need to be hunting the Uma so they can select which rules get brought into the world so they have the correct, like, power set to go face off against God. And that's how you're supposed to... Instead of actually just hunting negators. Oh. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, and I was going to say my third thing before you even went in that, and then I started reading uh, Maloney's comment. And that one got me to this. Let me throw something out. What if Tors is a translation error? And I wouldn't even call it an error, just a thing with translation, because ours aren't defined in Japanese. And what Victor actually said was Toz, T-O-Z, <gasps> which is him short for Tozuka. Like, that's oh, shit. That's wild. That's, well, that's, that that's, that's that's why I couldn't get my third, third bit of it. it. You know, I was just sitting here like, what? Yo, 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 yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so that's wait, 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 and mm-hmm. I had a comment back then about how in the spoil arc, Andy asks Shen what day it is. And yeah. Shen says it's 2020 August and was about to say the, the day of the month. But Andy cuts him off and he's like, no, like what day of the week is it? Right, and right. Shen was like, what are you talking, are you about, talking about, man? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what days of the week are, bro. And then like, yeah. then we get Uma Galaxy and then days of the week are added. So I said back then that because Andy knew what days of the week well, it was were. Well, it's Victor. It's Victor, but yeah. Well, yeah, because, well, no, no, no. It was Andy who asked Shen that during the spoiler arc. No, it's no, Victor. No, it was Victor. No, it's not. For sure. No, it's not. Yeah, it's 100%. It yeah. can't be. Yeah, guaranteed. Guaranteed. No, it is, though. Oh, well, yeah, anyway, sure. anyway, whatever. It don't matter. Andy, <laughs> Victor, whatever. Okay. <laughs> So he, because he knew what days of the week were yeah. before Galaxy was added and gave yeah. the world days of the week, I yeah. said, does that mean that Andy or Victor is the is God? Like, oh, sure. of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, undead right, right. back then. Right. And then, you know, things happened and we were like, okay, that, that seems to make a little bit less sense. But this situation here, if it is Toes instead of Tors and Toes right. for Tozica... Yeah. Then that kind of like brings that back a little bit, maybe. But it Taurus, does. Yeah. Victor said, "I'm human." 
Yes, and you he know says, I mean? I'm not Tozuka's Taurus. a human in our reality. Tozuka and is I, a human says, in our reality. Not, but Victor does say, I'm not Taurus. Or, yeah. So, like, actually yeah. would be saying that. I, yeah, oh, sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. yeah, no. Sure. But <laughs> let, me get my, let me get my third piece of evidence here for, for Nick. For yeah, Fuko being a, for a Fuko. new uh, fresh negator, yeah. 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 So, this might even be a slight reach. I don't think so. But when Victor, in the spoil arc, is looking at Fuko, you see him analyze her and feel like he doesn't know exactly what it is and then thinks about it and is like, okay, you're unluck. Here's how your ability works. He had to dig into Andy's subconscious to find it out because he's never uh, met unluck before. Yeah. 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 Let's Andy. go. That's actually yes. pretty dope. Yes. That's like, so yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. I hope, I hope it's not a reach. It definitely, uh, that sounds you know, great. Feels maybe like because it was no. just a look on the face. It's just a look on a face. That's, right? kind of like a, hmm. that's, that's the, the kind of series this is. You know what I mean? Where yeah. like those yeah. subtle quote unquote reaches, like yeah. those can, those can are, mean a lot. Uh, can not, mean a lot. Yes. Not they can mean a lot. Yeah. 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 And um, Seamus Nova, yo. So back when we were having the conversation about like negator abilities and what they mean to the god of of undead and luck, he had this comment that said, "Yo, so negators are like the rules slash limits to God." And if you Ooh. go back through our analysis of the of the series in our in our podcast there was a time where we were talking about like the origin of negator abilities and just like what this god like really is and mm -hmm. we were talking about it and i think i said something along the lines of what it feels like to me is that this god is a higher like dimensional being that uses this world or this like area of reality to like for entertainment, you know what I mean? Because the way that the rules are are given, the way that Apocalypse, com Apocalypse comes out and gives quests that have rewards and have penalties feels a lot like an RPG. The way that it's structured feels like if this god is just bored and wants to see if lower level yeah. life forms can defeat him. You know what I mean? Like wants yeah. to make it a game. Here are some abilities. Here are some moves. Here are some special attacks that you guys get to take me down. Can you find out the proper combination of these abilities that I've given this world to make a team to defeat me with said abilities? You know what I mean? It yeah. feels like yeah. this. It's a challenge. This 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 kid, this god, mm -hmm. is challenging the negators of this lower life forms planet. Yeah. You know to to see like yo can you take me down yeah. you know what i mean and if that's the case then it makes sense that <laughs> these negator abilities come back every loop these are mm -hmm. the set abilities that this god has given this world random people are going to have the abilities but the same abilities are going to be there yeah. use these abilities to defeat me find out the friends you need to make and the ways that you can combine these moves to take me out it, i i feel like that makes so much sense for the world of undead unluck mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. to yeah. find something like that out and if it's tozika sure. yeah if it's tozika Man. up there like hey can you guys like figure it out and help me finish my story bro <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, can yeah, you guys yeah, beat yeah. this if... god so i can like be a successful mangaka you know what i mean like <laughs> well I'm thinking thinking about shen being a sun wukong archetype like maybe all negators are incarnations of God or of a God, right? Like it's, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, you mentioned like, Jesus, you mentioned Jesus before. Jesus is undead if anyone is, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly right. He comes back to life. So like Victor or Andy, I fully believe now as, as Jesus and Ano Un is, is some other, you know, I don't know, reality warping. Uh, or like you know, a prophet that's, or, or something. Yeah, it'd be you know? more like a prophet. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a, cause the, the, um, the artifact is more so rea uh, uh, warping reality, not their negator ability. Anon's negator ability is, you know, un unknown. Unknown. Like, I get to, unknown. Yeah, I get, to, <laughs> get to hold my breath. And, and I don't know. It's not Melior, and I don't think uh, they have to hold their breath, right? No, they don't. For it to be. For a perfect for, plan? Well, no. <laughs> I know I want a perfect plan it has to be, but not for Anon to, you know, use. Their version of oh, perfect oh, plan. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I wonder if it has to do with like the amount of noise they make. I feel like if they don't make a certain amount of noise, or if they just stay quiet, they could just be invisible whenever they want, just be unknown yeah. to you. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, because holding your breath. I mean, if you're breathing, you're technically making a noise, right? So, and. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm even thinking about it is because I was on uh, Scuba Steve's podcast the other day, and he was just telling me about how that's, like, his favorite ability is Melioron and um, Corazon. Like, right? Like, don't make yeah, any yeah. noise and, yeah. and, you know, negate sound or negate, like, 
you know, uh, people's, um, you know, awareness of you. Or awareness of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it'd be, it'd be pretty cool to see, like, w there's got to be some kind of, you know, uh, condition caveat to unknown. Yeah. Right. Because it just appears like they're, wow, I'm saying I'm unknown now, and I just get to walk, and Andy's <laughs> like, wait, what the f I was just talking, you know, like, yeah. how are you there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh. Can hey I, uh, Nick, last point. Um, yeah. We are getting into the two-hour mark, so I, sure. I feel like we should wrap it up. Pretty oh, soon. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. yeah. So I want to well, say let, last let, point. Let, oh, my last point is a huge theory. Can I say my huge theory? <laughs> yeah, sure. you got to. Yeah, you got to. You have to. I, I feel like I have to because um, we're we're never. It, there's not going to be a great time to bring it up on our special grade podcast because yeah. that's you know a, a weekly you know yeah. current yeah. chapter Chap analysis. Yeah. Yeah. And this yeah. is this is really like a over the whole series kind of thing or whatever. And like we're having fun. I feel like we can keep going a little bit. But like. Go in, um, bro. But like, so here's here's my theory, and and this is a bit. I would I would say de generally this is a bit of a reach, I, but I do think there there's a lot of pieces of evidence for it essentially. Um, or maybe it's not even that much of a reach at all. You can you can tell me what you think. But like, basically, here's my theory. Every single time Andy takes the card out of his head, he gets more information about his mm -hmm. own ability and his personality changes. So, yeah. so for example, like chapter one, uh, he's like very, uh, you know, kind of like crazy, kind of like a little more chaotic than, yeah. than normal. Right. Um, before taking out his, his, uh, card, he doesn't even remember his name, right? He doesn't remember mm -hmm. jack shit about anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, he takes his, uh, card out when thinking how to fight. So the, the, the union negator hunters have said like, this dude's an amateur at combat, right? Yep. He's like, oh, yeah, bet. He takes out the card while thinking about fighting. All of a sudden, all the memories he has about fighting come to him. He puts the card back or whatever, or maybe he sells it out when he's fighting. doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, he's like a master at fighting. Boom. Um, so then uh, he doesn't take out the card again until the spoil arc. Obviously, that's the only other time he's taken it out. Now, before he takes it out, Shen says right to him, like, you're Victor. Like, show, show me Victor, right? Mm -hmm. Does Andy really remember Victor that much? He takes it out. He immediately, uh, you know, turns into Victor or whatever, right? Because he's thinking about him. He didn't turn into Victor chapter one. That's right. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's he right. just He just gained new knowledge. So he was intentionally thinking about something, Victor. And then, boom, he turns into Victor. <laughs> Victor, Victor can shoot parts bullets without biting his hand, right? So yeah. before this moment, every single time Andy, like, does a parts yeah. bullet gun, you he, bites his, he yeah. bites his finger and, and, and then shoots it, right? Victor can just go... Boom, 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 right? Mm -hmm. um, chapter 27, 28, when he's uh, fighting uh, on repair, it, it's kind of hard to see because it's a very chaotic, you know, battle where there's a lot of scene changes, but there, there's a lot of scenes where it seems like he's not biting his finger anymore, mm. right? Now, later, he does bite his finger, but definitively, chapter 39, he definitely does a parts bullet. He calls it crimson bullet. He does not bite his finger, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So it seems like every single time he takes out his card, like, he literally, he like, gains... becomes more of his original self. Yeah, like Victor, like Victor's coming through more, or like something about his ability is unlocking more. And his, oh, and also, after he removed the card with when he turned into Victor in the spoil arc, right? Uh, he you know saves the day, beats spoil. Uh, Fuko revives him after Victor's like burned to a crisp from coming from, back from the atmosphere. Yeah. Later, Fuko wakes up in a bed, and 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 Andy's there, and that's the scene where Andy first calls Fuko by her first name. Before mm. that chapter, he never calls Fuko by hey. her first name ever. <laughs> it's as if it's as if every time he takes out that card, he's becoming a little bit more gentlemanly, a little bit more yeah. of a of a cool guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because Victor's yeah. personality is coming out more and more. You know what I mean? Like, wow. so I, I feel like uh, this. This, this might makes be right. a lot of like, sense. Wait, yeah, that first now. that first card takeout was a little wonky to me, and maybe I yep. just I attributed it to I, boom did it boom real quick before right. like Vic because right. there is some like channeling time for Victor to take over. It doesn't happen yeah, exactly exactly instantly when you right. pull it out, and maybe right. Andy was able to put it back in and still had enough control. No, he had it before. out while he was fighting that whole time in like the first couple chapters, and then after the fight yeah. was over, he put it back. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. It was more than just a boom, yeah. blah, yeah. blah, blah, boom. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it was yeah. definitely yeah. a He little was bit chilling for a little it. bit yeah. with it outside of him. Yeah. And then yeah. he makes a comment yeah. like, the longer I have this out, the more Victor comes like back. That. So I got to put yeah. that joint back. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, not not the like the craziest reach That's or anything tight. like no, no, no. I, think, I, I don't think it's a reach at all. I don't think it's a reach. Like, at all. I like that. it together, like that. from a reread, like yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. I love that. Yeah. See, that's why Undead Unluck having this much reread value in 40 chapters is so fucking stupid, dude. Like what the fuck? So How do you crazy. fit like, so what? much How? information in such a small period of time and have it not feel cluttered?
You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. But. Yeah, I think uh, I think Schnuda should get a big point in here before we yeah, go to yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah, saying yeah. I was I was gonna say everybody go into like their last points before yeah. We <laughs> that. So that was that was I, an I incredible last say, point. I, I, yeah, I really have no idea what to say anyway because I've been I was looking at that chapter yeah. for, like the longest time and I noticed that like when he took it out he didn't become Victor immediately. Yeah. yeah, like I was like okay well this is the first chapter maybe he just wanted to like show off like when he takes that thing out he goes a little crazy. Well, or it was whatever, supposed to make like, us think that there was like a time that like it was a, it was a matter of yeah. duration. The longer yeah. he has it out the more chance that Victor will take over and he won't be able to have the conscious mm -hmm. effort to put the card back. But yep, yep. he became Victor instantly in the spoil. Well, not instantly, but like he yeah, took, took the like fucking card quickly. out and then he bounced yeah. to fucking orbit with spoil yeah. and was already yeah. Victor. It was, it was yeah. one, it was definitely less time with the yeah. card out than the first time he took the card out. So if yeah. it's not a matter of duration, it has to be what Nick is saying where Whatever he's he thinking think about, about when he takes the card out is the effect that he's going to have once it's out. I think it is what Nick is saying, but just yeah. to throw this out here yeah. is that it could be duration based. That the duration yeah. of how long you can have the card out decreases with each time you take the, the card out too, because ah. you do see like is Andy's white hair yeah. turn black. Oh yeah, that too. We were talking about that the last couple of weeks. Is that fucking? And we really didn't get what we wanted with that, where like Andy's card was bleeding like throughout the entire like yeah. you know after billy's betrayal and their whole like the unions regrouping ishin makes a new fucking round table and andy's card was bleeding that entire time and it was never you know removed so yeah we didn't get what we wanted quite yet with that that's going to be an easter egg for later for yeah. sure oh yeah but but yeah like with andy when he's changing into victor it's like partially the hair is white and it's going to black and it's taking some time for it to like happen right like and and yeah. same you know vice versa so i mean there, there definitely could be a duration thing in there but i think i much prefer what nick is saying is that each each time he does it he's yes. retaining more victor each yeah. time yeah yeah that's that's pretty crazy yeah, that would Boy. be oh that'd be insane <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah snooty yeah. did you want to finish um we kind of like kind of yeah, jumped in yeah. there on you yeah you, know you gotta get on cam so i can yeah. see you making faces right That's yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i don't i, I want to make sure that you get all of your thoughts out so yeah no just like one one little quick thing i was just thinking about like for this like last chapter like the most recent one is just what do you think about unseen rip and that rabbit what do you think they're gonna do like I don't know. <laughs> Wait, which which part? Wait, what are you talking about? Okay, if you go to the last chapter, I think yeah. it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Like when they're like, leaving, when you look in the background, you can see like the three figures. Like you the see first page. the yeah with the with the yeah. footprints. Like you see like yep, the little yep. like yep. I don't know fat rabbit thing. Yeah. You see like a mm -hmm. footprint in the back. And you see another footprint, and that yeah. footprint is Rip, and the guy next to him is unseen. So yeah. I was wondering, like, what do you guys think they're going to do? Like since they're right here with Autumn, do you think they're going to try to like capture Autumn, or do you think they're going to try and go and kill? Like Foucault, I think Anno they're and... going to um, be an obstacle. Like they're going to, sure. you know, yeah, interfere course, yeah, with sure. Andy and Foucault. But I like that you caught that it was unseen too. I didn't really want to talk about that until tomorrow. Uh, but uh, but uh, it's no, all no, good. No, it's we're all here good. Now. We're here now. No no no. It's all good. It's all good because I, I I really love that you say it though because it was so hard to really keep under wraps because it's Rip was torturing unseen the first time you get to see unseen and 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 he cut his stomach open and said hey. You can you can be invisible, right? And oh, that's where I got the holding the breath because uh, unseen has to hold their breath to be invisible. Oh, so they're so, straight up oh, Melion there, yeah, 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 and, yeah. and 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 so. Um, Rip slices the stomach open and you can see blood coming out of an invisible fucking, you know, silhouette person. And he said, yeah, it doesn't even matter if you can go ahead and escape if you want to. But this is never going to stop bleeding. and You're going to die unless you join my team. Yeah. And yeah, Rip yeah, yeah, forces yeah. Unseen to join the team at that time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I just Man, you know, wanted to throw that out there, too. That's like, that's so crazy because, like, I, I saw this footprint in, on the first page and I was like, yep, yeah, footprint. I yeah. didn't think it was an invisible I didn't think, person. I, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't think about it either. I was like, oh, Snooty, come on, I'm saving that for tomorrow. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my bad. Uh, no, 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 that was that's great. Awesome. That's, that's awesome. That's, that's no, that that's I'm, really good. I, I I love that that you caught that, and I'm glad that uh, man that this is what this story gives us. It's like yeah. it's it's so amazing that this is Easily this is the, the strongest best. title conversationally. Mm -hmm. right is this now. the best 40 chapters ever written yeah. of a story? Like, it feels <laughs> like it, right? It's crazy like, that's only 40. That's, that's just so wild so to me that so much has happened already because we were already getting our mind blown 
by what Chainsaw Man was showing us in 60, 70, 80 chapters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We were yeah. like, there, we were like, there's no way you can fucking do something like this in with 60 yep. chapters. This is crazy. Like really this, is hold my beer. this is wild. This is this is out of this is outlandish. You know what I'm saying? And then here's Undead Unluck, like yeah, exactly, Snooty. Hold my beer, okay? <laughs> let me beer. go ahead and get in real quick. Fujimoto, I'm going to let you and- finish, okay? <laughs> but on that but- unluck is here, okay? But Tozuka's uh-huh. the best. Tozuka, <laughs> man. It's also kind of crazy that through all, like, oh, all this I, stuff yeah. within like the <laughs> series, like there's still the question, like, who told Billy about all of this? Did yeah. he just read to you? That's that's like a whole different right. thing. That would yeah. be like a whole nother, like at least our discussion. Probably, yeah, 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 yeah. We should right. we should chill. We should chill. Kiko, <laughs> Kiko <laughs> chill out real quick. You, you got any, you got any last words, hombre? No, 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 no. We did we did what we came to do. This was beautiful. This was beautiful. I had so much fun with this. And yeah, the we chat really has been involved. Really, involved I mean, the chat hard so not. much this time. There's the chat has been recently that I'm like, ooh. I wish we I could was, just talk for yeah, two hours. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Well, yeah. if you want to keep talking with us, you can follow us on Patreon and subscribe on Patreon, and we will continue the conversation there. Every week, every Friday is when Patreon will get that video. But we review Undead Unluck, Jigo Karaku, Kaiju number eight, Kaiju Phantom number Seer. eight, Come on. and Phantom yeah. Seer with Dr. Stone, Stone on, the on the way. We've been saying <laughs> that for a couple is getting weeks, canceled. Though. Hey, relax, Judy. It is on the yeah. Calm uh, down. Don't but. say that. Don't kill yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm it down here, okay? We down. had a big couple of weeks, and that's why Dr. Stone is not already on the roster. Honestly, yeah. with, with all the stuff oh, yeah, we've yeah, done yeah, these yeah. last couple of weeks, yeah. like it was, I had to, it had to take a back burn. I've been reading yeah. all sorts of other things. Oh, yeah, for it's sure. my fault. No. I'm the one. <gasps> no, no, don't, don't, no, it's my fault. I will catch up in Dr. Stone. I'm only like 25 behind, so I could, oh, 20, yeah, 30 no behind. I could, I, I could power that out, but I just, even after I do that, I'm going to want to go reread because Dr. Stone is deep as hell. Dr. Stone too, is, is the so yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But, but yes. Yeah, I don't know. Um, that was that's the conversation, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. This was incredible. Yeah, um, if you guys are new here, if you guys have never been here before, first and foremost, thanks to everyone who uh, pulled up yeah, and followed and subscribed tonight. Welcome to Project Manga. If you guys are new here, I implore you to check out our about section and see everything else we do. You'll see us on Discord, Twitter, YouTube. All of our links will be in that about section. Um, as far as like people who showed up like halfway through, you know, or at the tail end of this conversation, um, we will be taking the VOD and throwing it on Patreon tomorrow morning. So you can catch it there and you can support us in doing so. Um, or you can wait for it to hit YouTube, which will hit YouTube a couple days later. So like on Saturday, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think it'll be on YouTube yeah. and we'll set it up as like a premiere so that like, mm-hmm. you know, it, we can kind of try to emulate, you know, the atmosphere of, uh, of this live show right now as best as we can. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah. yeah is the spiel that is how we do it over here at project manga thank you all so much chat for hanging out with us this is an incredible one shot and we will be back we next are. wednesday wait are we going to be back next 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 two wednesday? wednesdays two, two wednesdays. wednesdays no i know but like isn't our season going to end between now and then oh oh uh, well okay well stay tuned we'll stay tuned follow, follow stay project tuned. manga on twitter follow us on twitter join our discord yes. Fuck with us everywhere. Follow us everywhere for weekly anime and manga discussions. Okay? But that is going to do it for this episode of One Shots. Thank you very much, Snooty, for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Can't wait to have you back. I love being here. I really do. Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, Um, Everyone go follow Snooty. What the fuck? Go follow (laughs) Snooty at at Shonen Snooty. You you, you got this, bro. You can let him know. Get get on my (laughs) feet. But yeah, go follow me at Sean Shooty. Go follow me at Shnooty at uh, on YouTube. I uh, got a couple videos up right now. I'll be having up some force later. Uh, we'll blow up soon. Yes, sir. Uh, All right, you guys. Well, this is Project Manga. That's Shnooty. I'm Knox. Peace, y'all. It's Kiko. And Nickums. And we will catch y'all next time. Thank you.